It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee Ritchie's here. Andy Anako, Alex taking the week off, but there are some big birthdays to celebrate. A look back at the iPhone. 14 years ago today, it arrived. We all waited in line to get our first iPhone. Also, the 20th anniversary of WebKit. We'll look back at what WebKit has done to change the internet. Tim Cook calls Nancy Pelosi. Good morning! And a whole lot more. All coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 772. Recorded Tuesday, June 29th, 2021. Happy birthday, iPhone. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Sennheiser. Why settle for anything less than great sound? Come hear the difference with Sennheiser. Right now, for my first 100 listeners who go to Sennheiser.com slash podcast and use the promo code MACBREAK, you're going to get 15% off the Momentum True Wireless 2 earbuds or any of Sennheiser's amazing headphones. The offer code MACBREAK, all uppercase. And by AT&T Active Armor. We rely so much on our phones these days and are always on them, whether it's live streaming content, catching up with family on weekly video calls, or watching your favorite podcast. There's no room for fraud calls. Thankfully, AT&T makes customer security a priority, helping block those pesky calls. It's not complicated. AT&T Active Armor. 24-7 proactive network security and fraud call blocking to help stop threats at no extra charge. Compatible device and service required. Visit att.com slash active armor for details. And by Cashfly. Give your users the seamless online experience they want. Power your site or app with Cashfly's CDN and be 30% faster than the competition. Learn more at twit.cashfly.com. It's time for Mac Break Weekly. We're going to cover the latest news from Apple with the help of Renee Ritchie from YouTube. Hello, Renee Ritchie. Good to see you. I'm ready. I'm ready for all the Apple news, Leo. And if there's no news, we will just vamp the entire show. <laughs> Comic book news today. Nothing but. That's okay. Andy. That's the chortle of the one and only Andy Inako from Inako.com and uh, WGBH in Boston. Alex Lindsay was going to join us. He's at a family reunion in Cape Hatteras. And I guess uh, the bandwidth in Hatteras... Uh, was not ideal, so I thought that I thought that Ben with just sort of followed him around. Yeah, like, I know. You know, like 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 hungry hungry cats and like affectionate dogs. I I I'm kind of stunned that. The Alex Lindsay couldn't find bandwidth. <laughs> Is no one of those dwarven strongholds from Lord of the Rings? Because that could explain it. I don't think they had Wi-Fi during Lord of the Rings. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, I'm sure it's better for him to enjoy his family reunion than Absolutely. it is for him to have a reunion with us. He sees us every week. So enjoy, Alex. <laughs> and uh, the three of us will hold down the fort. It was 14 years ago today... The, the uh, it's so little. <laughs> the iPhone came out. Uh, you lined up, Leo? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I was lined up. Um, Amazing. It was announced at WWDC in January, but the very first iPhone that came out uh, you could get was in June. Um, I waited in line. So I, I debated whether going to San Francisco to the San Francisco Apple Store, and I thought that's going to be crazy. There's uh, pictures of uh, Robert Scoble and uh, Scott Bourne and others yeah. coming out of the store doing it's this. This is what everybody bag. did. That's the New York store uh, holding up the uh, the bag going, I got it, I got it. That's Vincent from Slash Gear. That's a famous story. Oh, really? By Steve Jobs. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, it, people waiting in line uh, was absolutely how you got an iPhone for the first few years. I waited in line. Uh, this is from 9 to 5 Max. Wonderful uh, kind of look back retrospective i waited in line as it turned out in the local i thought you know what i'm gonna have a better shot at getting one because you couldn't pre-order online you had to get in line at a yeah. store and stores had a limited number and this was for the first few years i got i thought i'm gonna wait in line at my at&t store it was fun waiting in line for the first few years was really fun you'd meet interesting people Steve I, bomber with you yeah no i was right it was in petaluma <laughs> and bomber was not there i uh, was behind the two guys who worked on google reader at the time google's rss oh, wow. program and they said they'd been up all night making it work on the iphone 
<laughs> which is pretty cool. Well, and they, and I bet that they were there. Back then. Yeah, I bet that they were there, like almost like professionally saying, "So we need to send some people down to buy an iPhone, and then right as soon as the charge bar gets to twenty two percent, see if the app actually, the system actually works, and then let us know." Here's uh, the Seattle Can you get store. Yours from Eric, no, Eric won't share his. <laughs> Here's the Seattle <laughs> store pulling back the curtains iPhone world premiere tonight at 6 p.m. I, I, I didn't I forgot that because later years yeah. we waited overnight, but I was actually yeah. smart of them to do it in the evening. What did you do, Renee? Were you, you weren't able to get it in Canada. No, I had to wait until it was jailbroken and then have one smuggled by Jawas over the border. Yeah, um, I did that for Amber MacArthur. Then, uh, I jailbroke yeah, one yeah, and brought same. it because you could do it at the time and then put it on your networks, uh, Rogers. And then it was phone. a TIFF exploit. You had to do is load a TIFF picture into Safari <laughs> and your phone was jailbroken. It was amazing. You're up. Yeah. Here's uh, Steve Wozniak going in the uh, Palo Alto uh, Apple store. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty God exciting. Bless. God bless him. And all the, all the different, and, and, and it's legendary that, like, of course, someone at the inside the Apple store would see, uh, like, Steve Wozniak, of all people, just, like, waiting in line, like, in a, in a deck, ch in, in a folding chair, say, oh, no, no, okay, come in, come in, come in. And I was like, no, I want to be outside with everybody. I want to wait in line like everybody else. Here's a wonderful photo. I have not seen before from the Palo Alto store. That's Steve Jobs on the left, obviously, in the baseball cap, talking to Bill Atkinson. Uh, next to Bill, the <laughs> smiling Andy Hertzfeld, the two, of course, guys who were most responsible for the Mac, uh, the first Mac. So uh, that's pretty, pretty cool. Really need to see them. Yeah, uh, in there. It's, it's it's too bad that we're it's it's uh, I I honestly didn't remember that this was the anniversary until of course I'm on Twitter and suddenly everybody's like giving give their 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 stories. Oh, here's where I was and here's uh, here's like a personal memory I have about the the launch of the iPhone, and it makes I'm I'm, uh, I'm companies have to grow, companies have to move forward, and as they become two trillion dollar companies, they kind of lose that they have to lose that kind of personal touch. It's just what happens. Uh, but it's it's kind of sad that we're Kind of no one. No one's gonna. No one's gonna have stories ten years from now. Of, Where were you when you got your first M one uh, M one iPad? Uh, it's uh, or uh, even probably the Apple Watch. But it does show you at the time when Apple was still very much on a rebuilding sort of uh, arc. Uh, redemptive arc, as the as the as the, the the folklorists would say, that it really did feel like we are we are the freaks, we are the geeks, we are the the huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Uh, we have a <laughs> sense of community, and we bond together through shared experiences, such as it, it, it wasn't so much that we wanted to like be the be the first to have like a, a trendy tech gadget. It was that well, I bet that I'll, it was the same reason why uh, a lot of us are first in line uh, to buy tickets for like a. a a Star Wars movie. It's like, I want to spend the night camping out in a parking lot with a people who, like me, are crazy enough to want to camp out overnight. Yes, the crazy to get ones. to see the, uh, the fir first showing, first day. So it's pretty cool. I think differenters. Here's a picture. Yes. I didn't, this is actually kind of surprising. I didn't realize that the uh, Apple Store was selling the iPhone 2 online. Francois Pou got this, uh, put it up on Flickr. Uh, this is, uh, We'll be back soon, it says on an iPhone. We're busy updating the web store objects. for you, and we'll be back. Yeah, web objects. We'll be back by 6 p.m. <laughs> Pacific. You can see it. It says web objects in the URL. W O A. Yep. <laughs> you can also yep. see the, the vintage of this because uh, Francois has Dig News in his bookmark bar, <laughs> as well as <laughs> Delicious, two things that have since come and gone and come again. Uh, here's the original yeah. iPhone. Here's the current iPhone <laughs> Pro Max. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Pro like Max. Like a baby phone. It's so small. Uh, this I didn't. This has eight gigs of storage, which is. Oh wait a minute. This one has thirty-two megapixel gigs. Megapixel camera. So wait a minute. Am right. I confused? Is this this is the three G? Yeah, that's the original one. This the is the original. Left no, th no, that yes. exactly. The the one you're lifting up is the because remember it had the to make to accommodate the uh, oh yeah the antennas that had plastic on the bottom. Also, it was a two G phone, not three G. So this is the three G. I got the wrong one out. Right. This is the Apple original Apple iPhone, and this one yeah. only has eight gigs of storage. Mm. But you didn't yeah. need it because there was, was no one. app store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what did you need it for? Your music. It your was music an internet device. Videos. Uh, I'm going to find a 30-pin cable an iPod. and, uh, and uh, yeah. charge this up because I'm yeah. sure it'll still work. Look how the other thing to, th to look at, I have a case on my iPhone. Let me take it. This is actually as thick as the iPhone with a case on it. Leo, the original iPhone could hollow out your Macs and use it as a tauntaun to keep warm <laughs> in the winter. <laughs> uh, volume rocker. Uh, no, uh, uh, oh, actually, uh, 
30 pin SIM slot at the top. Here's the on off button, and it had a uh, headphone jack. Sadly. Well, t technically, it, had, it, 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 it said, headphone jack. <laughs> exactly. It had, it had sort of, uh, it, it, because that, that curved bezel was aesthetically more important than usability, they, they, they recessed it so deep that like a standard headphone jack would not, it was, it was a standard right. headphone jack, but your, head, your standard headphones would not actually reach deep down to actually make contact. So you had to get this, again, it, it, was, it was the start of the dongle wars. Yeah, that's right, because yeah, you, cause you couldn't put a regular headphone have. jack in here. It was so deep. The Apple ones fit fine, but anything wider than an right. Apple yeah. one, you had to dongle down yeah. it. It's so tiny, and yet, and yet we were all thrilled to get it. It was the biggest they could make at the time. That was the biggest screen that yep. they could fit into You're the device kidding. at the time. Wow. No. I have you a bigger panel, screen this, the... than this on my printer now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, compared, compared to an Apple watch. Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's yeah, actually it's kind of close to the size of the Apple Watch. <laughs> it's the original Samsung <laughs> watch was pretty much that size. Pixels. Yeah. Uh, the Apple Store employees got special merch. These are the launch uh, shirts given to them. Friday, June 29th. The wait is almost over. And say hello to iPhone. Yeah. Um, wow, this is just. Uh, I'm so glad that Nine to Five Mac put this together. There's the bag you got. Yeah. Yep. I remember that bag. <laughs> If you didn't order online, I guess yeah. uh, it was a really nice bag, and uh, and the, and of course, the packaging uh, designed by Alan Dye, quite famous. Dye told students at Syracuse University every single black iPhone box had to have its corners painted, so that there wouldn't be any <laughs> color inconsistency. They wanted a black a box that was completely black. <laughs> So some poor Chinese yep. person had to paint every corner on every box to make it black. Oh, that's what that, that's that's what you got like that's what you got uh, Apple interns for. Yeah, yeah, really. Come, ch come change, come change the world with us. But first, here's a sharpie. Here are a couple of master cases. <laughs> you got we a lot more accessories in those days. Of course, there was more room in the box because the phone was so small. Yeah, yeah. you got a white plastic bo a dock that was designed for the iPhone. Large power brick earbuds, the 30 pin connector cable, a black microfiber cloth with iPhone. Oh, I wish I had that embossed on it, uh, and a crystal clear tray that held the iPhone. Um, mm -hmm. This is a picture of all the. All the and things. You could buy that. Yeah, you could buy that Bluetooth headset that they made. Oh yeah, that was like a yeah. Wow. And you and you can just imagine that the microfiber cloth was was a a specific demand from Steve Jobs, given all given all the, the the all the stories that came out about how upset he was about how bad the iPhone looked when he took it out of his pocket, like with the original plastic screen and the and the the the, the, the casing, that he nothing nothing must blemish my precious. Here's the iPhone stereo Delicious. headset. This was controversial, the white color on the yeah. headsets. People didn't make white headsets in those days. It turned out to be a brilliant marketing move because anytime, yeah. I guess it was for the iPod that first came out. Anytime yeah. you saw somebody with white headsets, you knew, oh, yeah, they're using an iPod. Even the ads. They had some of those iconic ads with silhouettes and just the white headphones. It was yeah. Here's uh, the iPod, iPod ads. Walt Mossberg's first uh, yeah. review. His, uh, he wrote, all, all we've been testing the too. iPhone for two weeks in multiple usage scenarios in cities across the country. Our verdict, this is in the Wall Street Journal, our verdict is despite some flaws and feature admissions, like no cut and paste, the iPhone <laughs> is on balance a beautiful and breakthrough handheld computer. Its software especially sets a new bar for the smartphone industry and its clever finger touch interface, which dispenses with the stylus and most buttons, works well, although it sometimes adds steps to common functions a breakthrough handheld computer he called it yeah pogue says in quite famously in his review the iphone matches most of its hype uh ed Baig, who also got a review early review unit reviewed it in usa today stephen levy for newsweek said in a sense the iphone has already made its mark jason snell reading for macworld in 2007 the iphone is a real deal it's a product that has already changed the way people look at the devices they carry in their pockets and purses. After only a few days with mine, the prospect of carrying a cell phone with me wherever I go no longer fills me with begrudging acceptance, but actual ex excitement. <laughs> nice job, Jason. Well Face done. Was so different. Like just the man touched it for the first phrase. time, yeah. and it would scroll, and it would the inertial, the rubber banding. It was oh, just yeah. such an object in like the classic Apple sense of object design. Yeah. Yeah. I got. I. Uh, I. I got to. Uh, I got a briefing. Right Right after it was introduced at the keynote, like three or four months before it was actually introduced, and I had 
I think like 45 minutes and Jaws was there, a couple other executives wow, were there. Wow, nice. And, and like, and that usually like that's an opportunity to, I, I gotta make, I gotta maximize every minute that I'm there. Any, any, all the questions that I came up with, that I can get it, I can get a direct answer to. Uh, but even there, even there, I, was, I, I specifically remember saying, okay, uh, go, go over to the banquet over there and get a cookie and a, and a soda. Cause I just want to spend 15 or 20 minutes just like playing with this. And I just remember it was just intoxicating after having things that that scroll like like pixel animation almost it, it was just so fluid moving between apps was just perfect uh, i must have gotten one of the ones that actually had wi-fi working because i was loading web pages and it was working it was it's it's hard to communicate the first time uh, getting able getting you getting uh, hands on with a device like this after years and years of like devices like this which was like sort of like the the the, the day Jude. This is <laughs> I, I I can't. I was trying to remember like how long how long was it before I actually got my first bought my first that's, one of my own. That's the HTC with an Apple sticker on it. <laughs> yeah, and I, put, I remember I put when the because I, I had because I had an Apple it's runner, roughly the I same size. <laughs> yeah, uh, I had an Apple owner, but like I felt like I couldn't I couldn't use it after I did my review. So like I still like okay someday someday this year I'm going to be I able to dream. buy like a regular iPhone. Yeah, look how small the camera. Uh, Opening is. I had a Trio thing. 680 and I themed it to look like an iPhone because you could oh, theme those funny. back yep. then. Oh, you're I themed hysterical. it as much as I could to look oh, like yeah. an iPhone. Yep. I was using the BlackBerry Pearl before I got the iPhone. It was my last BlackBerry oh, ever. BlackBerry <laughs> Kevin says yeah. thank you. Here, K Casey Neistat uh, was in line at the uh, AT&T store in Union Square to get his iPhone and, and made a video, which he didn't release until uh, four years later when Steve Jobs passed away. This is his... Uh, this is his video. I made this movie in June 2007 for the launch of the original iPhone. I never published it. Now seems like an appropriate and we time. Are calling it iPhone. Oh man, I remember that moment. That was at MacWorld Expo. We are on our way to wait in line for the iPhone. Oh my our God! That's his here brother, here right? In Amsterdam. I think it's, it's him. Brother. Is it? No, no, it's oh, his brother. it's his brother. Okay. Yeah, his brother's got a channel now. I never got a Cabbage Patch Kid when I was little. Never had a Furby and didn't get Nintendo until he could buy him at a yard sale. My ship had finally come in, and Steve Jobs was the captain. Our plan was as follows. Leave <laughs> Amsterdam, fly to Lisbon for a one-hour really layover. Editor, Six and a half more hours. This is, this is a little Jersey primitive compared to Casey's uh, latest works, <laughs> but it's still creative well, and eight, beautiful. Eight, as Casey watches various now, internet videos, I'm getting concerned. Van's concerns were warranted. Reports from New York spoke of lines with hundreds of people in them. And we still hadn't chosen our location. We've just landed in the United <laughs> States. The iPhone comes out in less than 22 hours. We're looking good. iPhone mules. Okay, so how many more hours? 21 hours left. We're on our way to Manhattan this is now. Great. Directly to the Apple. This is really great. What a yeah. what a period piece for several reasons. It's great to see Casey Neistat with long hair. Oh my <laughs> no, no, none of his sunglasses. That's the Apple Store Casey, Soho people all around the block, even in the I'm rain. I'm cutting. Casey, you let me out? So they decided not to go to the Apple Store. There's the AT&T. Is there AT in line? Uh, no, not right now. You do want to start? Line right up. He'll be right behind you. You'll be line pioneers? All right, great. We'll be right, right back guys. with our tents. Thank you. <laughs> what a cool guard. Cell phones no like kidding. But everybody was pretty excited uh, about yeah. this, including this. At this point, it was such a novelty, even including the folks at the AT&T store. Yeah. There's the sidekick. I remember that. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. It's, it's I had every easy. one of these phones. <laughs> it's easy with 14 years of hindsight to think, oh, well, gosh, there was the uh, Apple, the iPhone completely re the, 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 the smartphone market was totally moribund before and, uh, and Apple invented the smartphone. But actually, there were like a bunch of really, really great phones that people uh, people love. There, there was a generation of teens whose entire childhood uh, nostalgia is based on talking to their friends uh, over their over their sidekicks yeah. Uh, yeah and also when you think about how the uh, the original iPhone, iPhone had, begins here yeah. <laughs> they put a sign on his on his yeah. mattress he's the only one in line <laughs> well yeah. no wonder yeah. feeling slightly less special so, again it was why we don't have better things to do with our time a man is a success if he gets up in the morning and goes to bed at night, and in between he does what he wants to do. Bob Dylan said that. It was Woody Guthrie that said, I know the police cause trouble. They cause trouble everywhere. But when you die and go to heaven, there'll be no policemen there. 
but there were policemen outside the AT&T store around 6 a.m. giving us a hard time. What just happened? Officer Macaroni woke us up about five minutes ago. We were all out cold, and he just kept <laughs> repeating himself. What the hell are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? What are you guys... And every one of us gave the exact same response. It was something like this. And then he started laughing, <laughs> gave us back our IDs, and they, said, they gave him a weird Have a look. nice day. Enjoy your fun. <laughs> I'm sure the uh, NYPD got, got a little more New York. <laughs> got a little more used to this notion in the years later. That's the New York experience you're hoping up here. for. Yeah, there's now four people in line. line up here. Oh, they're starting to put up uh, stanchions. It's, yeah. get, it's getting serious. Line's getting a little longer. Looks from the New Yorkers getting a little weirder. Oh, it's 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 pretty substantial. Casey and his brother did yeah. a good job getting there early. You lined up for a go. phone? And they I love it. They had air mattresses oh, and tents and please print clearly. Here's your put your name on a card. The guy's letting him in. He's going to get his iPhone. That was a great moment when you got your iPhone, wasn't it? Because it wasn't sure until the minute you got it that you were going to get it. Yeah. I think they only had 20. This is the sort of social justice that Woody Guthrie had in mind. No, exactly. He was, he was more about like Pinkerton goons beating up and shooting unionizers yeah, yeah, yeah. as opposed to buying a luxury <laughs> consumer not a, device. Not exactly what Woody Guthrie But, but, but it works. It's a, it's, a fun, it's a fun film. <laughs> really well done. Uh, early Casey Neistat we've uncovered covered here this is good yeah. and then of course the tribute to uh, steve jobs yeah it's true without steve i think it's safe to say there would be no iphone right yeah he got angry so often to make that iphone happen it, it yeah. was uh it really didn't work uh, for a long long his wife's time. friend had to be bragging about how microsoft was going to reinvent touch at yeah. dinner and he had yeah. to get super angry about that and he had to get super angry about his phone that it was a piece of garbage and that yeah. they should make a phone to fix it yeah yeah, you know, when people make fun of like Microsoft and others for like dismissing the iPhone like after it came out, you, they, you, that's a little bit of like self uh, history rewriting. It's uh, rewriting because you have to remember that your your options, if if you wanted to have a really good phone that could give you a big big like productivity or fun experience, you had you can go into the AT and T store and buy have a choice of three or four, most of which had had uh, app stores, most most of which had cut copy and paste. Uh, I think. I can't remember if 3G was starting to roll out then or if that was like a year later, but this was feature, the first iPhone was very feature poor when it first came out. So you really had people who very much believed in the concept of an internet device, uh, particularly people who had Wi-Fi in their homes and now were in their offices and now were able to, again, surf the web. Before the, the one of the most significant things about the iPhone, there's a reason why one of the big like, it's an it's a phone, it's an iPod, it's an internet device. It was the first one that had a web browser that actually let you browse the damn web, as opposed to uh, even the most expensive smartphones would fetch sort of a bastardized version of the uh, of the website or give you a website or something that was had absolutely nothing to do with the page layout or the uh, typography or the images. That you would get if you actually hit the New York Times site. And they consider that and a this is why feature, was right? Like a proxy bandwidth saving feature. The right. time. <laughs> the, uh, somebody caught the uh, the Jobs family at the Apple store. Steve Jobs and his wife, Lorene, at the Palo Alto uh, Apple store. Actually, that's not Lorene. Oh, there, there she is behind him. I think. It's like, Steve, we have five of these phones at home. Why yes. are we here? Steve, why are we at the store? Well, talk about kind of it's taking a reason. victory lap, right? I mean, it's the, it's the same reason why Steven Sondheim is in the audience on open opening yeah. night. You want to see how the audience reacts to the work. Yeah. Look at the crowds. Phenomenal. Phenomenal success. Um, One of the very few conversations I've ever had with Johnny Ive is when he was talking amongst some of his colleagues and they were saying how, how great an event was and he just said, is it, is it really, do we really know what the product is until it gets in the hands of the customers and they tell us yeah. what it is? <laughs> That's really like their attitude the entire time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What a success for uh, for Steve too to to yeah. push that through uh, against all odds. He yeah. had a huge success with the Mac. Um, he wouldn't show it to AT and T. They they kept asking him. And he kept giving them <laughs> obtuse explanations. They had no idea what it would even look like. Uh, here's uh, from Popular Science: iPhone launch hysteria. This is all thanks to Nine to Five Mac, which collated all of this on their website. Then for the opening of the Apple Store. 
convening the cube. <laughs> Not quite romancing the stone, but I guess that's well, you know, it's a, it's it's reference to the skateboarding movie gleaming the cube. Oh, is it? Okay. I've yeah. missed that deep cut. <laughs> Sorry, you'd have to be a Gen X. <laughs> It was. It wasn't a big, big movie. It was something that you. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> a a zoomer with an X. Uh, here's the activation process. Welcome. You had to use oh, yeah. iTunes. Welcome to your new it, iPhone. It was, Let's get started. You plug it in. Activate your phone with AT and T. There was no other carrier, of course. Register and get an iTunes Store account. Put your context music and more in your iPhone. Uh, all through the uh, iTunes app. Yeah. And that and that was a smart move too. That uh, uh, other other phones they might have even had app stores, but it's not as though as part of the setup process was. By the way, give us your name, your, uh, your name, your address, and a credit card number on file. Uh, if you set up an iPhone, you have an iTunes account, which means that the the, the ground is well prepared for sell, selling you lots of other things through this phone. And that was probably part of uh, another part of the pie regarding uh, the iPhone success. All these credit card numbers on file. In the first 30 hours, Apple sold 270,000 phones. Within 74 days, they'd sold a million. <laughs> Steve said it took nearly two years for that many iPods to be sold. So I think it was an instant yeah. hit. But remember, it was also overpriced. Yeah. Uh, I bought, I must have, I really spent some money because this was the 8 gig. This was the big one. There was also a 4 gig <laughs> the model. The flex version. <laughs> they stopped selling the 4 gig model uh, by September uh, 2007, and also cut the price of the eight gig phone by 200 bucks, uh, and gave people who spent that 200 bucks a hundred dollars store credit. I don't remember what I got with that store credit. Of course, uh, now a billion iPhones in people's pockets. Yeah, pretty amazing story. I, what a great success! To a billion 14 pockets, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 14 years ago today, and it's yeah. you know, as Apple fans, I think it's really fun. Uh, somebody's saying, what's special about 14, nothing. Exactly. We'll do this again next year, I promise you. <laughs> if, the, if, the, if the anniversary fell uh, fell during WWDC, we probably would not be having this conversation. Right. But still, it's good, it's nice that we do have a, get to have this conversation because yeah. Apple, the it is a it is still a community. It's still in some ways a culture, and it, it like I was saying before, it's uh, it's an, it's fun to revisit the time when Apple was still in that rebuilding transition when you could when it it, it seemed as though. Uh, the company was so laser focused and had such a small product line that it felt like this is this is everything that the company was working on at that time. Uh, you certainly got that ex that effect when uh, th this is the reason why it was worth flying out, flying three thousand miles to wherever uh, to see Steve Jobs roll out uh, something like this because the the, the amount of pride on it, he was just like glowing that yeah. finally I get to show this to everybody. Yeah. Finally, I get to see their. Uh, it's like yeah, I know what. Their reaction is going to be as an Empire Strikes Back when this when the, when the, when Luke Skywalker says this line I want to be at the front of the theater facing out so I and I take pictures of what people are going to shout and say as soon as this thing gets unveiled uh, and it, it was great to see I, I, I this one of the things I miss about uh, about Steve Jobs uh, it was there at the iPad it was there at other events too the, d let's not forget yeah. that when Apple uh, showed off the iPhone in January it was barely barely yeah. working and uh, there's some there yes. there've been some really great stories about the uh, uh, the Blackberry didn't believe it was real yeah <laughs> they thought yeah it must be a lie <laughs> famously mike uh, uh, Lazar lazaridis and jim uh, balsley watched the iphone veiling in disbelief yeah, yeah this is from losing the signal the <laughs> well, uh, lazaridis said these guys are really really good balsley <laughs> said it's okay we'll be fine <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, they don't have a keyboard. They don't have they don't. <laughs> Maybe not so much. <laughs> uh, but there, one of the engineers who does, I can't remember uh, where this was. Was it Wired? Wrote a great piece on how fragile that demo was <laughs> no. and, and how if one thing went wrong, the whole thing would crash. It was, it was, it was a path. It, they, there was no, there was nothing random to the sequence of operations. It was, it was like restoring power to, uh, uh, to Apollo 13. It's like, no, first you do this, then you make the phone call, then you open the web page. And it, uh, what, what was the, one, one of the money quotes from the, from the story was that we were backstage doing shots and every time Steve did something and it didn't crash we took another shot yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> By the end of the thing, they were quite, quite drunk. This was in the New York Times Magazine. Uh, I finally found the uh, the article uh, by Fred Vogelstein, and uh, it it was quite an article. I remember, and it quotes mostly a guy named Andy Grignon, who uh, was the uh, engineer, one of the engineers uh, behind the iPhone. He was senior manager in charge of the radios, and knew more than anybody <laughs> how uh, how risky this demo was. So it wasn't just a victory lap for Steve Jobs, seeing an actual working <laughs> iPhone in the hands of real people given that six months earlier it it really didn't work must have been pretty exciting i mean yeah that's that was a must have been a very very brutal six months uh getting it working um anyway happy uh happy birthday iphone i still have mine and uh i'm never yep. never letting this guy go oh yeah i've plugged it in before right john i think we have and uh I don't. I think there's nothing much on here. I might have wiped it, but uh, it's still kind of cool to see it again. Now you can emulate it probably on a on oh, a, yeah. a Atari <laughs> computer or something. It wouldn't be too hard. Actually, there was a there there was a was it on the App Store or whatever. There there was someone who wrote, who wrote an iPhone one emulator uh, that w that would run on like a current iPhone. So and would actually connect up with a lot of the uh, a lot of the built-in features of the of the current iPhone and the current iOS. But it and gave but it gave you a sign of here's what the oh my god there's actually a pre-installed YouTube app on here. <laughs> and oh my god. That's right. Uh, there was. I forgot. Yeah. And I think I think Apple nixed it. I think I think unfortunately because app because the iPhone doesn't support side loading and and Apple doesn't want this app to exist, you can't use it. But yeah. uh, it was such a it was such a great experiment. It, it is it is baffling when you recharge a device like this and you realize that my God is because I, I I have a I also have a, like a perfect Chinese knockoff of an iPhone 3GS, uh, 3G that I bought like in Beijing and some and sometimes I remember once recharging like my my original uh, iPhone and thinking my is this the Chinese one why is this so slow why is the, <laughs> why are the the graphics so blocky why is it yeah. <laughs> uh, Renee we're we're not getting your audio are you uh, muted okay we're gonna pause for a moment and fix Renee's audio. Actually, this would be a good time to talk about audio with a brand new sponsor. Do you want to do that, John? Sure. Yeah, let's talk about Sennheiser. As you probably know, because I've been singing their praises, I've been using Sennheiser headphones for many decades at this point. The best headphones on the market, I have to say. In fact, uh, Scott Wilkinson recently uh, recommended the Sennheiser uh, Wired IE300 earbuds, and I, I can't believe for the price... Uh, I've never heard better earbuds. So I was very interested when Sennheiser announced these new Momentums. The Momentum uh, True Wireless 2. And I have to say, you know, these are the... I would say, in fact, I, I, I've purchased Sennheiser Bluetooth headphones before. Easily the best Bluetooth headphones out there. Uh, when it comes to earbuds, you know, I'm talking sound quality. That's why you got to check out Sennheiser because they make really the best earbuds money can buy. For the last 75 years, other companies focused on phones and tablets. Sennheiser's always been about sound. They've always put sound first. And I have to say, and it's not just me, these sound better than Apple's. They're, in fact, CNET said clearly superior sound quality to the AirPods Pro. And the earbuds to get if you value sound quality above everything else. Very easy to pair. Their free smart control app allows you to adjust the sound of your personal preference with a built-in equalizer. I really like that feature. You can switch off your surroundings and dive into that impactful song or important episode with their new active noise cancellation feature. And boy, the battery life is great. Yeah, it comes in a charging case and it has up to 28-hour battery. 28-hour battery life. Plus, this is beautiful. Look at the case. Fabric covered. Um, it's, it's one of those cases where you get a, you know, you put the uh, earbuds in and, and, the, and the battery charges and they look really good. Of course, they come with a variety of tips so that you can fit them to your ear hole. You want it to fit uh, snugly. That's how you get the best bass. Uh, they also have, by the way, Sennheiser is famous for their over the ear headphones, their sound bars. I mean, they really are the audio experts. And as I said, from, for wired, I think the IE 300s, their recent wired headphones, there is nothing better. But I sometimes you just don't want to put wires in, right? Uh, you don't have a headphone jack. It's a little bit complicated. I'm listening to my... It's sensed that I put them in. 
it automatically stopped my audio, started my audio book. I'm going to stop it with a touch. These are absolutely fantastic. When I'm looking for wireless, this is where I go. Of course, when I'm looking for great headphones, I've always gone to Sennheiser. Why settle for anything less than great sounds? Over the ear, uh, in ear, and now wireless Bluetooth. These fabulous Momentum True Wireless 2s deliver the best listening experience. They've also been finely crafted for even the most discerning listener like me. Why settle for anything less than great sound? Come hear the difference with Sennheiser right now. This says for my first hundred listeners. I wonder how long that's going to last. Maybe don't wait. Go to Sennheiser.com slash podcast. The promo code is MacBreak. 15% off not only the Momentum True Wireless 2 earbuds, or but any of their amazing headphones. This is the time to stock up on your Sennheisers. 15% off. I wish I'd had this when I... Well, man, I could have saved a lot of money. I've spent a lot of money over the years at Sennheiser. S-E-N-N-H-E-I-S-E-R. Sennheiser. S-E-N-N-H-E-I-S-E-R.com slash podcast. Seriously, uh, just ask any audiophile. Sennheiser makes fantastic headphones, the best in the business. And these new wireless are clearly the best Bluetooth earbuds I've ever used. Promo code is Mac break for 15% off uh, for the first hundred people who do it. So I would I would do it the minute you hear this. 15% off. Go to Sennheiser.com slash podcast and use that offer code MACBREAK. And that's all uppercase, by the way. M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K, all caps, for 15% off any of their amazing headphones. That's a great deal. Thank you, Sennheiser, for <laughs> sending me these. And uh, not that I wouldn't have bought them eventually anyway, but I appreciate it. And uh, thank you for supporting a Mac Break Weekly. We are very fond. I've actually, I use the big tips, but they come with a, a variety. I have big ear holes. Come with a variety. Yeah, Sennheiser. Yeah. yeah. Aren't they great? They're just really the best. I just have loved them. I have the years. MKH416 right here. I, I live on it. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's the microphone. No? Yeah. Yeah. All their stuff is aces. Yeah, yeah, the best. Well, you know, I I, I just want to thank you for uh, uh, it was a, there was a good reason why we talked about the uh, the iPhone uh, anniversary because during the break I'm like oh geez I feel left out so I'm gonna go to my like drawer of like old phones oh, you I have get it. up yeah. I, have to, I have to get up my and that's that's when I noticed that like a couple of like my really old phones have been like exploding. Yes, my <laughs> so. Pixel 4 XL just exploded. Yeah, I think the right. battery swells with yeah, age and maybe the glue battery weakens. Battery up, so I'm yeah. gonna. So I'm going to have to like do something about that before there's a time fire. to empty that drawer. I know I'm really or bummed because I in a bucket of sand. the Pixel 4a 4XL is the one I use for uh, uh, reviewing Android 12, and it's my Android phone. I'm and it's bursting at the seams. I guess I can't oh, use no. it, it's right? Bursting with can I add something to <laughs> Yes. Can I add something else in, Leo? Yes. I just did in recognition. It's also the 20th anniversary of WebKit slash Safari, which oh, that's changed huge. our world in ways yeah. that I think nobody really expected back at the time because they were, you know, that Don Melton was brought in and told that Apple needed to make their own browser and he got Ken Kashinda uh, and he got, you know, the entire team together. And they were, they were looking at Gecko because he had come from Mozilla. He was the person who helped uh, open source Mozilla because he was a seminary graduate. He knew the most curse words and Mozilla <laughs> used curse words as line breaks in the code at the time. So he had to get them all out of there before they went public. Uh, and so his first instinct was to bring Gecko over, but the Gecko code base was bigger than the, the OS X code base at the time. And they just said, no, nope, never going to happen. So he and uh, William, uh, Jeff Williams, was it Jeff? No, not Jeff Williams. Uh, Kev Williamson, I'm blanking on his first name. Uh, and Ken got together and they used KHTML Conqueror uh, and th that was tiny, a tiny, tiny footprint and it was open source and they, they built Safari on the single principle that you had to have zero regression. Every feature you added had to be paid for in performance by improvements or you, know, you, you make it fast or you fix something else that was slower and you pay that off every day and it's really worked it's really worked out well for them, I think, and for all of us over the last 20 years. It was uh, June 25th, 2001. Don Melton forked KDE's KHTML yeah. layout engine and the KDE JavaScript engine. He explained in an email to KDE developers when he announced this, this is according to Wikipedia, that KHTML and KJS allowed easier development than other available technologies because it was only, as you said, only 140,000 lines of code, cleanly designed, no curse words, and standards compliant. <laughs> Um, and but at this point, WebKit, 
you know, of course, Chromium is the dominant rendering engine on the web because of the success of Google Chrome. But I think WebKit is, has to be number two just because it's on all iOS and Mac OS devices, right? Also, well, the PlayStation, I mean, it's a fork, right? the Kindle, um, BlackBerry uses it for their browser. Tizen uses it. The world changed so much. Like back then, IE was everywhere. Pocket IE was a branch that people used WAP browsers. And Apple made WebKit Remember and WAP? made it open source. What a terrible yeah, idea. And, yeah, and, and Don became like a hero and a villain because every time WebKit let them do something amazing, Steve was like, that's amazing. And every time, like when Google forked it and made Blink, Apple's like, you're an idiot. You know, and then, but it fits on the iPhone. You're a genius. Because that's actually a really good point because we're used to the yeah. crummy mention, but it, that's a fork from 2013 of WebKit. So really, yes. he made the, Don made it the right took choice. took over the world. He took over the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess Mozilla is the only one not using a WebKit uh, for Yeah, Opera changed, Opera Microsoft changed, yep. BlackBerry changed. Yep. Because the two of the people who created WebKit left and went to BlackBerry. They were two brothers, and they, they built the Torch browser at BlackBerry based on WebKit. Yeah. Uh, how much did Apple contribute back to KHTML? I they, think it was they a were required tense. to. Yeah. Uh, I, the speed, the speed in which Apple contributes back is always, I think, a source right. of tension, but right. not, not that they contribute back. Right, right. Uh, the WebKit team uh, rever has reversed many Apple-specific changes in the original source code and implemented platform-specific abstraction layers to uh, make it a little bit easier to port to other um, engines. In July 2007, KDE moved from K HTML to WebKit, so the, the, the victory was yeah. complete in six years later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very cool. And, it is, and WebKit is open source, and uh, Right. I believe yeah. it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Safari so yeah. is proprietary, but WebKit is open source. Right. And Darren Adler uh, sort of took the mantle from Don, Don Melton at Apple, and he's been keeping all the green and blue apps going at Apple ever since. Nice. With Mache, I think Mache runs WebKit now. That's a really, really, it's, it's one of my favorite teams because Apple doesn't have that many open source teams, and WebKit team really <laughs> embraces that spirit, and they do it. So and they have like just they have such passion like even now they're putting these technologies in to help get rid of passwords but not in a really weird inhuman way but in a way where like it just it handles the secure tokens for you and they just keep pushing those Google is great in terms of pushing web technologies to be more like native Apple is great at pushing web technologies and being more efficient and more private and I think we got the sort of the bo best of both worlds approach and you get all of those in sort of the same you don't get to, I'm, I'm sure Google still takes some WebKit stuff, and WebKit play, plays plays nicely with a lot of the Chromium stuff. But we get the benefit of these huge companies making a better web browser. And for of us course, all the time. no matter what browser you use on iOS, you're using WebKit or iPadOS. You're using WebKit yes. because they're not allowed to use their own engines. So even if you use Chrome on iOS, you're using uh, WebKit. Uh, yeah. These are all the browsers that use WebKit. Uh, quite quite a few. Dolphin. The world. Yeah. Uh, 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 iCab, I remember that one. Conqueror, of course, that's where it came from. Maxthon, Midori, OmniWeb, discontinued. Otter browser, I never heard of that one. It's quite a few. Yeah. And even like the Chromium browsers now, like you can get Brave on iOS, which is a Chromium browser, but it's still forked from WebKit and still has amazing, a whole different opinion on how the web should be. And the WebOS browser from Palm was a WebKit based yeah. browser. Yeah. That's well, interesting, too, because they wanted to make WebKit the, the foundation layer for iOS. They wanted to use it as the application development layer. And Don himself said, no, it's not performant enough. And if you remember, yeah. it took 20 seconds to launch the calendar app on, on WebOS. So he had a point back then. And they also didn't want a keyboard. And all those people who disagreed politely left Apple, went to, went to Palm and made the iPhone that they wanted to make. And it was called the Palm Pre. Very nice. I have I have one of those too, which I checked and has not yeah. exploded. It's, it's, we, we, we forget. I've, I, I would be I would be very just very sad if my pre like weren't pristine. Same. Uh, but yeah, it's. I mean, it. There are a lot of battles that we. It, it, I, I've the iPhone is such a wonderful case study, and how much fighting and arguments there and good decisions and bad decisions go into launching a project that's transformative and then 10 years later it's like this thing the success was in, it feels like the success was instant and, and complete I mean Steve Jobs famously uh, according to uh, later reports he just didn't like the idea of, 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 of apps like native apps on the phone at all he really did think that whatever people are going to want to use actual apps for just do it in the web it'll work just fine uh, and he really had to be talked into it uh 
Thank you for bringing in another news story. <laughs> you you know well, we're a little scant a today. <laughs> no, that's a good one. Web kid is a is a big one. Huge. Yeah. And uh it, that's a big anniversary. 20th anniversary was just five, 4 days ago. Yeah. Apparently Apple is moving I didn't realize this, but is it all of iCloud that uses uh, AWS and Google? Is that the case or Apple runs its own network operations centers too, don't they? They have a mishmash, yeah, of yeah. servers and data. Apparently, uh, this year Apple's spending on Google Cloud. This is uh, from the information Amir Afradi and Kevin McLaughlin. Uh, spending on Google Cloud is 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 going up fifty percent this year. It was on track to spend around three hundred million dollars, a fifty percent increase from twenty twenty, moving apparently some stuff off of uh, AWS. Apple increased the amount of this is I guess from a source because I'm sure Apple does, yeah according from to the a person information it was based yeah but it's according to a person with direct knowledge of the matter so yes. Apple doesn't oh. say of course last November Apple increased the amount of data it stored on Google Cloud by some four in one month 470 petabytes they are over the eight exabyte eight exabytes in total data stored on Google's servers eight exabytes. Yeah. They're paying with this from the Google search money, right? Like Google gives them $12 billion <laughs> for the search placement, and then they give Google back a few hundred million for the yeah. storage. Yeah. Apple is their biggest customer, bigger uh, than number two, which is ByteDance's TikTok. Um, they've surpassed that pretty easily. That's astounding. Astounding. Yeah. Um, but again, we have to condition. The information is very good, and their sources are, are very good. Amir's got great sources at Google. But again, this is an anonymous, anonymous source. And, and I wonder if part of this, uh, part of this of Apple choose, seeming to put more money into Google than AWS, is that uh, Google's uh, green initiatives and Apple's green initiatives uh, are very point. much in line to each other. So if Apple's saying that, hey, we want to make all, all of our operations 100% green uh, by 2030, they can still they can they can buy these services from Google and keep that pledge. That's a very good point. Apple, according to the information, cut its cloud storage spending on Amazon in 2017. It was $700 million. In 2018, $270 million. That was as it put its big network operations centers online. But they say uh, the uh, increased use of Google Cloud suggests that Apple has grown so big so fast it can't easily yeah. source materials for, develop, and operate the servers needed to handle the resulting data. That makes sense. It's non-trivial, I mean, yeah, as they say in the industry. Yeah. <laughs> you, not only do you have to build them, but you've got to get the computers. And nowadays, with the chip shortage, that's getting harder and harder. Uh, so and Google's built really clever, really scalable, really sustainable, and Andy's point, yeah. really efficient modules for doing all this cloud storage. Yeah. And it's so much custom. Like People talk about how Google might make a custom chipset for the Pixel, but they've been making custom chipsets for servers for years. They are really right. advanced on that stuff. You used, used to be able to buy Google Search as a blade for your server. That's yeah. that, that was like 10 years ago. So uh, eight exabytes on Google Cloud makes them number one, followed by ByteDance with 500 petabytes, a lot, a lot less. <laughs> uh, number three, Spotify with 460 petabytes, Twitter with 315 petabytes, and Snap with 275 petabytes. Uh, nobody from Google, bites. ByteDance, Snap, or Twitter would comment, nor did Apple or Spotify. Um, but that is an amazing number. That's amazing. And yeah, as Apple's focus moves to services, I'm sure Apple would love to host it all. Although lately, uh, there's a lot of uh, criticism about uh, network operation centers and the amount of energy it uh, uses. Yeah. There's a, uh, a knock in Arizona that is coming online that uses as much water every day as, uh, as a town of 50,000 people. Yeah, <laughs> that is. I knew a somebody real who was problem working right on one now. of the data. Yeah, he was working on one of the data centers for Apple, and he was. He, it, it sounded like the engineers there had never been more consternated in their life because they kept saying, "We can do it cheaper like this. We can cut some corners here and get it done faster." And Apple's like, "We don't want it done cheaper. We don't want it done faster. We want it done exactly as it is spec. Can you not do that?" And they kept going <laughs> over that discussion. Oh, and they're like, "We want to. We'll spend the money it takes. We want it this way." Yeah, yeah. Um, this is in Mesa, Arizona. A massive new data center that is about to be built will use a huge amount of uh, water, and they use the water for cooling. And Arizona is not exactly uh, <laughs> a tropical forest. Yeah. Um, 1.7 million gallons a day, 1.7 million gallons a day of water 
to uh, to cool it. Five hundred fifty acre feet of water a year. Uh, oh, actually, ultimately it'll be uh, fourteen hundred acre feet of water a year. That's three hundred twenty five thousand eight hundred fifty one gallons times fourteen hundred. You get you can do the math. Five hundred million <laughs> gallons of water a day, uh, or a year. That's amazing. Just horrific. So that's it's yeah. not just the electricity, you know. It's a, they're they're big environmental footprint for these things. Yeah, and uh, and recent research papers really put this into light that how much it really does increase the the divide between so-called wealthy nations and so-called uh, less <laughs> and, and less wealthy nations. That uh, an, an, a nation like China or the United States they can build up all of this technology. And it uh, create build businesses that both uh, increase their own uh, country's uh, uh, domestic product, and also create uh, services and technologies that help people who have the money to spend on those things. Meanwhile, this creates damage to the climate. And historically, it is the poorer nations that suffer from climate damage first. And they're also the least likely to benefit from whatever new innovations are being created from these cloud from these uh, cloud facilities. So it's it's going to be, it's, <laughs> given that we're all dealing with an unnatural 113 degree heat wave across <laughs> across everywhere, this is probably not the one, the thing that's going to kill our species. It's, we, we, they got four people who are kind of scrambling ahead of it, but it's still something that we have to keep in mind that there are there are implications to all of this. It's not just electrons moving from column A to column B. It really is going to have an effect uh, on disparities that we should be narrowing and not widening. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Does this uh, does this webcam look familiar? <laughs> the Verge says uh, it's just a great design. <laughs> Dell's versatile ultra sharp 4K webcam. Looks a lot like uh, the Apple Eyesight. That it does. Kate, oh, I thought you meant that tunnel thing from Star Trek that ate all the ships. <laughs> <laughs> that too. It looks like that too, or maybe a Stargate. I don't know. Quick, get some whales and tell it we want 4K. It's bandwidth. a cylinder. <laughs> it's a cylinder. Yeah, I guess. But uh, but uh, it also has the uh, feature where you turn. I think where you turn the knob to yeah. to uh, yeah. close the shutter. That's a nice. Uh, that was a nice feature on the. Uh, I wish Apple it's would put better cameras on their computers maybe they will yeah, how's the camera They're starting on the, the iMac the 24 inch iMac, iMac is, is a good. better camera right is it 1080p yeah, 1080p plus nice. apple's image signal processor which is really good yeah okay good that's nice of course yeah. this dell camera is 4k but hey okay <laughs> what do <laughs> you need 4k for really well it's only but 60 think, frames per second at, at 1080 you know you can't have it all <laughs> <laughs> okay <Yeah. laughs> but if you think about it, it it is apple did solve quote solve this problem unquote in a way that's very typically apple when you give them the the merit hey the you know, the, the webcams kind of stink and i know that the web built-in webcams stink pretty much no matter what computer you buy but could you make the, the, the webcam not stink and they'll say how do you do can do be back with you in about a year and you thought that you were asking them, please give us like a high def higher definition camera. And they said, no, we'll give you like a camera that will, no matter where you are in the frame, it will automatically reframe you so that you stay in the middle of the frame. And then you pause and think, okay, I like that feature. That is, that's a useful feature to me. That solves problems that I actually had that forgot to ask about. Uh, and now I feel as though I don't have to give you quite so much guff about uh, weak, <laughs> weak low resolution cameras. Did we talk, remind me, because I do so many shows, sometimes I forget. Did we talk about Tim Cook calling Nancy Pelosi last week? It happened uh, last so. week. We talked. We talked a little bit about the about Apple and other companies' uh, reaction to the, the those five bills that were being discussed in Congress yeah, last they're, week. They're lobbying which, which hard. Which did move forward. Yeah. yeah. According good morning, to uh, Nancy. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Let me tell you. Apple even put out a white paper why about why side loading would be a terrible idea for. Uh, this cute little family letting side loading me. is not incredible, <laughs> mm. and that's kind of what he uh, told the uh, Speaker of the House when he called her. According to the New York Times, really sourced this one five people with knowledge of the conversations. Uh, the cook All said, "Her aides listening in." <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah. right? Antitrust bills were rushed. In fact, it's probably leaked by Pelosi's office. I would get, I would guess, yeah. but I don't know. Given, they, given the tone, given the tone of the meeting, yeah, right, I would say so. They would crimp innovation. They'd hurt consumers by disrupting services that power Apple's iPhone. The New York Times added a little editorial in there. Apple's lucrative iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is, of course, part of the big lobbying effort by all of uh, the companies. Facebook actually lost a, a very important court decision yesterday 
um, as you may, or rather one. Oh, I no, no, they, they won. One, yeah. one, wrong, wrong choice of verb there. We're not, we're not, we're not used to hearing that when it comes to antitrust. <laughs> Facebook in the United won States. a big one. Uh, the yeah. district court uh, in Washington uh, ruled that the uh, lawsuit from the FTC and 48 states could not proceed because it could not be, they did not successfully demonstrate that Facebook was a monopoly. The judge yeah. wrote, you act as if everybody knows Facebook is a monopoly and provided me with no evidence that it is. So I have to say, you haven't proven your case. Yeah. He had they a board do get game to come with back. Mark Zuckerberg as a top hat. You know, there were certain <laughs> yeah. case proven. He's wearing a monocle, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly, it's a monocle. They, they, the FTC does get a chance to refile, so it's not as though this this has ended. But yeah, this this is frustrating because it's it really is like, do I really have to go into all the reasons why Carl is absolutely the worst and why I'm not inviting him to our <laughs> wedding? Yeah. Do you, do I really have to do? I, is it is or is it just understood that where he goes, <laughs> that, chaos? Bad, Things follow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it really more than anything else, it was uh, the, the judge saying you didn't file this case properly uh, yeah. because job one is to is to prove that it's a monopoly so that you can pursue any trust action against them. And if you yeah. don't do this and I think it's reasonable to say, you look, can't skip the look steps. <laughs> yeah, you can't skip the steps. Look, uh, there are other social networks. Facebook is I mean, it's dominant. It's big. But is it a monopoly? But that's the game, right? Like defining the market is the entire game we're playing. Like by, by some yeah. accounts, iPhone is not a monopoly because there's so many more Android phones. But amongst U.S. teenagers, it has a tremendous share. So whoever right. gets to win the define the market game is going to be a big victor in the define the regulation yeah, this, this, game. This is why Apple is very, very grateful for Google's existence at this time. Because they can say, that. well, no, we're not locking into, we're, we're not uh, making our users, uh, we're not forcing people to uh, stick to, uh, to an app store. If people want to sideload apps, all they have to do is give up their thousand dollar iphone and buy an android phone what could be simpler the judge uh wrote samsung leave and give you a bunch of money for it this is yeah. this actually <laughs> will be i think relevant to actions maybe not in europe but to actions in the u.s against apple and maybe we'll make uh the ftc think twice monopoly the judge wrote monopoly power is quote the power to control prices or exclude competition such that a firm is a monopolist if it can profitably raise prices substantially above the competitive level where a plaintiff prices is an important word because yeah. Facebook is free. For the US, it's everything. Yeah. yeah. Where a plaintiff can provide direct proof that a firm can has in fact profitably done so, the existence of a monopoly power is clear. Because such proof is rare, however, plaintiffs and courts usually search for indirect or circumstantial evidence of monopoly power by infer inferring it from a firm's possession of a dominant share in a re of a relevant market. And you have to abuse it too, I believe. It can't just be a monopoly because you're the only one who came up with the idea. You've got to, like exactly. Nintendo can have, can be the only one who can make switches because they're not abusing anything about being the only one to make, yeah. you know, switches. So it is so possible. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say, you can't say Facebook's raised the prices of anything, maybe advertising, but, you, but, yeah. uh, uh, but, but it, it's free to its users. But you could say perhaps that it's putting up barriers to entry for others into the market. And that's really, I think, the, the case the FTC is making, that by buying Instagram and WhatsApp. That's, remember they, were, they went after Apple for books and not Amazon? because And Amazon controls e-books. They just control, like, they are a monopoly for e-books effectively, but the government was upset because Apple made prices higher. Right. And that leads yeah. you to a bunch of things about price dumping as well, or, or cost cutting, or, right. uh, you know... Uh, it's it's very complicated, but the the U.S. seems to always want lower prices, and the EU seems to always want more competition, and that it would maybe benefit both to have a more well-rounded view of the of the market. Yeah, that, that's why these this uh, this set of laws are that have just made uh, the next step through Congress is so terrible. Excuse me, so dangerous to Apple and Google and whatnot because they add new rules to the system. One of them specifically saying that if you are a huge uh, huge uh, uh, an enormous company that has the power to control your own control the market you can't make you can't introduce products that and give those products an advantage over would be competitors and this is the sort of thing that could lead apple to uh, uh, to uh, no longer be able to bundle apple music uh, or uh, or or the uh, or the tv app alongside uh, excuse me preload these apps uh, in the iphone and all the other devices because it's one thing to have the safari browser which you could argue doesn't it doesn't really make 
Apple money and it doesn't cost Apple anything to uh, have uh, Chrome and other uh, browsers compete and, and work on this. However, it is a huge improvable advantage to say that are you, are, is a user going to uh, use this app that's already on the phone? They're already logged into their iTunes account because that was part of the setup of the phone. Uh, they're, uh, it's, uh, they're, they've got like a free trial period that, that came with it. Are they going to decide that no, you know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to give Spotify a try, or I'm going to give uh, Title a try. No, they're going to stick with Apple Music, and probably because most music services are the same regarding what consumers want from a streaming music service, that is probably where they're going to stay. So that's that's one of the areas where Apple is going to have big, big trouble if these flaws actually come into come into fruition. And the judge, the judge kind of spanked the FTC. He wrote, the <laughs> FTC's complaint says almost nothing concrete on the key question of how much power Facebook actually had and still has yeah. in a properly defined antitrust product market. It's almost as if the agency expects the court to simply nod to the conventional wisdom that Facebook is a monopolist. After all, no one who hears the title of the 2010 film, The Social Network, wonders which company it is about. <laughs> he uh, basically it's... encouraged uh, uh, the FTC to refile with more specific yeah. uh, uh, monopoly. It's really interesting because these questions are like, just like, like the technology questions are so new and it always takes a lot of time to catch up. And one of the ones I've been wrestling with over the last week is that I would very much like Gatekeeper and side loading on the iPhone. But when I started talking about it, I got so many comments on both sides of these issues that I had to take a step back and say, well, I just think of everything as a traditional computer. So is that my world space? And there are, are there people who hate traditional computers and bought the iPhone the way they'd buy an Xbox and not a PC gaming thing? Because the last thing they want is to have to worry about traditional computing. And then I was like, started thinking about like choice because Apple phrased this in an interesting way. I thought like, is the choice on platform or between platforms? Should you have the right to sideload on every platform or should you have one platform that offers sideloading and one doesn't? And which one of those is real choice? Like if you make every platform sideload, if there are people who adamantly don't want that because they consider that an exploit or a potential problem for them, they now longer have it. They no longer have anything they can go to the same way. If you said every Xbox has to run full on windows, they would have no recourse if they just wanted to get a darn gaming console. And I think these are like no right or wrong. I think anybody who says you're absolutely right or absolutely wrong about this lacks nuance and empathy. But I think it, it is a very big discussion that we need to have as more people start using computers who aren't computer users. Well, and the other interpretation uh, which members of Congress and uh, law professors have taken from this judgment is we need to rewrite the antitrust laws. They haven't kept up with technology. They don't. Ref yeah. They are not appropriate to the kind of uh, businesses we now need to regulate. Um, Representative Ken Buck, a Republican from Colorado, this is from the New York Times, and co-sponsor of the antitrust bills, says, today's developments in the FTC's case against Facebook shows that antitrust reform is urgently needed. Congress needs to provide additional tools and resources to our antitrust enforcers to go after big tech companies engaging in anti-competitive conduct. So that's the risk to Apple, of course, is that, uh, these, that these, this will just strengthen the move uh, in Congress to uh, change the laws in such yeah. a way that they can go after Apple and Facebook and others. Yeah. And unfortunately, they don't even have any friends. It, it, it's starting to look as though they don't have friends on the Supreme Court either, because the few cases that have come through that you might think would be relevant to figuring out, are they predisposed to breaking up a big company or are they predisposed towards preserving a, a, a successful business? It's that they have been leading towards, well, no, this is, we are, we are, we are siding with the consumer. We're siding with the marketplace over this one specific big business. Uh, let's take a little break. We'll come back. Lots more stories, uh, less serious, I think, to talk about in just a bit. Andy Anako, Renee Ritchie, great to have you guys. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Alex had to bow out because of his uh, bandwidth. He's at a family reunion, which is great. So I'm glad he's spending time with his family <laughs> and not with us. He'll be I back. Think, with I our think his, next I week. think his family just like bought one of those like illegal jammers <laughs> yeah. to say we need we want yes. to have his attention for the entire family reunion. <laughs> but I have to do office hours. <laughs> he built an anti-radio box and stuck him inside it. A cage. Our, sh our show today brought to you by Active Armor, AT and T Active Armor. We rely so much on our phones these days, and as always. Uh, we're on them all the time. Whether you're uh, listening to this show, your favorite podcast, or other streaming content, maybe watching Netflix, catching up with family on video weekly uh, weekly video calls, which I do every week uh, on FaceTime. These are things we do on our phones. We want to do. We don't want to be bugged by fraudulent calls saying 
your your car warranty is expired. What car warranty? Thankfully, AT and T makes customer security a priority and helps block those pesky calls. It's not complicated. AT and T Active Armor. It's twenty four seven proactive network security and fraud call blocking to help stop threats at no extra charge, and it works. Compatible device and service required. Visit att.com slash active armor for details. Did you hear that part? At no extra charge. I love it. Thank you, AT&T. Good job. AT&T, active armor. Visit att.com slash active armor for more information. Uh, colorful bands, Renee. Are you getting <laughs> one of these new international collection bands? I ordered two of them immediately. Did you? Is there one for Canada? Yes. So here's Australia. South Africa. These are the colors. Oh, and you got South Africa. Australia, Belgium, yeah. Brazil, uh, Canada. Oh, that's, oh, that's nice. Red and white. That's pretty, actually. Is that the one you ordered? Yep. China yep. is uh, red and yellow. Denmark is red and white also. But to distinguish, the watch face is the same as Canada, I think. No. The bands are slightly different size. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> They're abstract. They're abstract and very large. You know, like, like the Australian one is, I think they, they went after like sports colors because the Australian oh, one is, yeah, or, is orange and green and the New Zealand one is all black. Yeah. Which makes a lot of sense if you know what rugby or soccer is. I like the Great Britain one. One half of the band is blue, one half is red. You've got the colors of the Union Jack. That's actually kind of nice. That looks like something Austin yeah. Powers might wear. You got to share them with America, though, because you have the same <laughs> colors. I know. Greece. Well, we have the same colors as a lot of people. Italy. Uh, Jamaica. Look at Jamaica. That looks good. I like it. Japan. Mexico. Netherlands. Nice and orange. New Zealand. All black. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> For the all blacks. Russia. South Africa. That's nice. Join a law movement. Yeah. I like that. It's got uh, lots of colors. Very colorful. It's my new Shasha Lasha band. What's, <laughs> what's Shasha Lasha? Shasha Lasha is that it's a South African anthem. Not the main one, but the one that everybody sings at the The, the one events. that's, yeah. Yeah, we have that too. Sweden, Spain, South Korea. So sport your national colors. There's no America. Where's my red, white, and blue band? It's, it's right next to the UK. I think you passed it with the UK one. Did I go buy it too fast? I want America. Oh, France. Those, I think. Red, white, and blue is France. No. Uh, I, 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 maybe they have a, a special window for the American band. <laughs> there it is. Ah, da, 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 da. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Red, white, and blue uh, on the both the band and the watch face is cool. Are you going to use, I guess you have to use a watch face, right? If you're going to wear the band. I mean, you don't yeah, have to. Yeah, and they're to, downloadable, but... which kind of opens the world to a whole bunch oh. of new things. Because previously they were all hard-coded. And, you know, like, can I can I get a, a they're not going to give me an Hermes face if I buy an Hermes band. Are they? Are they? Are they? Or a Nike face if I buy a Nike? I mean, yeah, like, like, this is a whole new kinds of customization. Can I get this in time for the 4th of July? <laughs> I think the, uh, mine is coming July 6th, I think. Is that time for right Canada away. Day? When's Canada but Day? But they've done these before, uh, July 1st. They've oh, done these before, but time. they were only for the Olympic teams. Like, they were only for national teams. You couldn't get them commercially. Oh. Uh, Apple gave them out. So this is the first time. And it's different from Apple because previously they've used Beats to do the, all, like, the Olympic and team stuff. They've never done that on the main Apple brand. So it's interesting to see them get into this kind of stuff. And I wonder if they're going to do more of it. And these are the Sport Loop uh, bands. So they're the Velcro. Yeah. I'm sorry, Hook and Loop. Yeah. Hick and Looper bands. So yeah, so they're like the sweatpants, the sweatpants of sweatpants Apple bands. of Apple bands. Who was it quoted you? It was so cute. Uh, <laughs> as Renee Ritchie yeah. calls them, the sweatpants of Apple bands. I thought, oh, that's nice. That's <laughs> nice. Heard that. that was very sweet. You're, you're famous now. You're famous for that. Infamous. Infamous. When, when are you going to get your own band like you know like like the, like Yeezys? When are you going to get the the the, the Reezys? The Ritchie for the band. Ritchie. The Reezys. I yeah. like it. I like it. Uh, xCloud can now be played officially. It was in beta, but is now official. Microsoft's streaming gaming service can now be played on iOS and Android in Safari. Let me uh, let me just fire this up here. I am. Um, I have to say, maybe because we're in the beta and everybody's trying it, uh, it's a little bit uh, choppy right now. Um, this is on our. Uh, uh, we got about a four or five hundred megabit. Uh, connection right now, which is pretty darn fast. Let me see if I can play Sea of Thieves. I'm using the um, ready to play. What does it say? Tap to start playing. Okay, there we go. 
Um, I'm using the Xbox controller, which is a Bluetooth controller, to pair. It will work with a variety of controllers. Oh, uh, it doesn't. Yes, there it goes. See if the. Are you getting the audio, John? Don't. Doesn't look like you're getting the audio because the audio is nice. Unfortunately, you were getting it earlier. Huh. There we go. Hear that choppy? I was getting that at home, too. So it's probably... These are running on, apparently, Xbox Blades in uh, in Microsoft's network centers. But you're not going to want to play the game like this. The music will drive you crazy alone. Birthing pains. Yeah, it may it may merely be that there's so much interest in this now that you can do it on an iPad. I mean, what a great way to make an iPad a gaming machine or a Mac too. By the way, it'll work on yeah. Safari. I'm still so salty that Apple won't just allow it in. It's like not it's like so short sighted, like not yeah. allowing Netflix on ten year, ten years ago. It's just like no Netflix. You have to put every one of your TV shows and movies inside the iTunes store so we can individually rate them. It's just absurd. Let me uh, press the play Sorry, button. Sorry, it bothers here. me. I want to. I want to play all this no, stuff no, as I'm, an app. I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you. It's like I, I kind of feel sorry for a person who has to be a spokesperson and make that statement and pretend like it makes any sense whatsoever. <laughs> pl please don't ask a follow up on how this is protecting our users. How is this protecting yeah. our users? Oh, okay, I quit. It'd be such a value add too, because my, uh, Apple's gaming story is at best incomplete at the moment. Right. And having all of these streaming services would be such a boon to to gamers. Any time, especially especially with the with the, with the iPad line, you've, they've got they've got thousand yeah. dollar uh, tablets that are trying to compete with superb thousand dollar to two thousand dollar same price Windows tablets. And if you can just simply say the things remove reasons for people to say, uh, yeah. I really want the iPad, but gosh, it doesn't do gaming or gosh, I can't run uh, I, I can't run this window app in this in this virtualized shell. Uh, I can't do this. Simple things that are like this doesn't hurt you at all, Apple. This doesn't protect yeah. the, the consumers. It doesn't protect your market. You you basically just have this rule and you have some you're, you're because you are are a huge, huge company, you unavoidably, you have people who join the company to enforce rules that they didn't create, and they are not doing their job if they don't enforce this rule. And that's why they're doing this, because not they're not so, saying, you're right, this is silly, we're going to change this rule. It's like, nope, my job is to say no. The, the stuttering Xbox we're seeing is, by the way, is, is not it's us. Amazing. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, there is an on-screen controller. A lot of the game they do offer some games in the uh, xCloud subscription. Uh, uh, with touch controls, but I have to say this is unplayable right now. The way it's uh, it's it's every second it's pausing or something. I don't I don't know if I can make this better. Maybe it works better on the Mac. Uh, it is currently a good time to try because it's one buck a month for the first three months, uh, but then it'll cost you um, whatever Xbox uh, Game Pass costs. I'm wondering if it'll smooth out watching, when the game starts playing. There was a video playing. last night. Um, from Viper with the community manager for Xbox Game Pass, and they went over all the different like plat like ultimate passes and all the different features you get with all of them. And the ultimate one looks like if you want to do everything, yeah, that's your best bet. Yeah, you can try it out now. I, I've been an Xbox Gold member for a long time with my Xbox. I was really uh, hopeful I that I'd be bundled able to right with. The yes, you get it all if you if you yeah. pay for the <laughs> the full thing. But uh, I'm disappointed by the uh, the streaming. I hope it gets better uh, soon. Uh, still, I guess, technically in beta, but it's an open beta now. Anybody can uh, join it. So you'll need uh, an Xbox account. Um, and, they should uh, have soft tested it with classic Xbox games, like original Xbox games, now streaming and the, as the X Cloud beta. And then yeah. everyone could have played like the Hulk Smash game for a month and helped them test it. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting that they, they uh, you know, I mean, the theory is great. And uh, Stadia streams a little bit better, I have to say. Uh, Stadia has worked all right, maybe because nobody's using it. Possibly, right? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I GeForce Now I've used on a, an Nvidia Shield, and the streaming is is very smooth. So I'm just a little disappointed this isn't working quite as well as I'd hoped. Well, on you so can't far. use Stadia in Montreal out of solidarity for Jade Raymond. So that you know, it's Aww. she's she landed <laughs> she landed uh, quite well. She's uh, who did yeah. you, I just saw she got a new job. But I can't remember what it is. It's escaping me too. She was the Ubisoft uh, director who took a job at Google. Uh, best known for helping create Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs. She then moved to um, Stadio, where she lasted only a few months. She uh, now has a, she's founded a new independent development team called Haven yeah. Entertainment Studios. 
with Sony Interactive. Which is in Montreal. It's in your, your network. Yeah. Your network. Montreal is a good video game community. Yeah. We have Ubisoft. Absolutely. Uh, Mythic Quest talks about Montreal all the time with fear and dread, which is how we want to be perceived. Yeah. <laughs> no, no word about what the game will be, but... Uh, She's got a blog post at the PlayStation. I just blog. remember yeah. uh, watch. I watched the Lab with Leo and Call for Help and Electric Playground. So I, these are all the people I grew up watching on television as a kid. So mm -hmm. I, I did. Their careers I did have to commend Jade Raymond for her excellent taste. She she says several people have asked me recently after all of these experiences, do you still want to be in the games industry? The answer is always an unwavering yes. The games industry is where I belong. Whether it's playing Settlers of Catan with my kids. Or Valheim with my team. Double thumbs up. <laughs> Games <laughs> continue to bring me joy. So uh, I'll be very interested to see what she does. She's created some of the most amazing games. And it was a, was a great catch for Google, but clearly Google's changed its... Uh, plans they didn't want to they decided not to develop any in, internally well it's 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 been a complete mess over there there's absolutely no reflection <laughs> everything on, on everything her. everything and I'm, and I'm google and, does and, and, has become and a i'm mess. and i'm glad i'm glad she's heading her own studio because yeah. this is she's exactly the sort of person who should be here's a budget here's an office here's a budget for snacks hire some people go go be, go be awesome <laughs> check in with us occasionally good news for m1 mac users linux Kernel 5.13 with support for the M1. Um, there have been people who have been able to install Linux on the M1 Mac, but now having it native, I, I would imagine, would make that easier. Um, yeah. And that's actually a lot more important than a lot of people realize because the number of people who do administration uh, and web development who they they would love to, they want a, they want a MacBook but they also want to be able to use all their favorite environments for for development and Unix uh, Linux basically solves all those problems. Claris has added Apple Silicon support to FileMaker. I'm really glad FileMaker still exists. That's an excellent yeah. database, yeah. a really good way to do custom software. Uh, they've added Microsoft Edge integration and server enhancements uh, as well. So Claris, which was spun off of Apple and then spun back into Apple, they purchased the uh, company that created FileMaker. But uh, FileMaker 19, version 19.3 is out with Apple's <laughs> Silicon support. I have to say, I, it was kind of a red-letter day uh, yesterday on my M1 Mac as I do periodically, I launched uh, the uh, activities monitor to see how many Intel processes were still running on my M1, and it was zero. Zero. Uh, almost, every, well, yes, everything I use now has been ported over to the M1, uh, including a lot of the things that were running in the background that were kind of annoying me, things... Uh, I actually took Steam off because that still was Intel, but <laughs> the, yeah. there, there were things running in the background that I just didn't want... I didn't want Rosetta to be running at all, if possible. So M1 has really made some great progress in the seven or eight months it's been out. Yeah, that's that's something that's probably unique to Apple. They have the ability to they have the ability to really force something down developers' throats and just say, "Look, this is this is what the future is going to be. You can either be part of Apple's future, or you can be by the side of the road where there's no cell service and, <laughs> and, and nothing. Uh, and if, if you want to live, come with us. If you don't want to live," Fine, don't don't update your apps. It's when you look at what what uh, how many restarts Apple, excuse me, Microsoft has had to do with Windows, how many plans they have made and had to abandon quickly because they just got no support whatsoever uh, for for this thing. And Microsoft is is a two trillion dollar company. They're huge. They're not like an also ran. Uh, but Apple only Apple has the ability to say this is where the ship is going. You can either jump off the ship or stay on the ship. This is the cost of staying on the ship. <laughs> there is no start button would be Apple's answer. <laughs> I loved it because Wall Street Journal, uh, Joanna Stern was interviewing Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, talked about a lot of things, Windows 11 and so forth. Uh, he, she asked him uh, about in integrating Microsoft software and services with the iPhone. He said, because Joanna's a, a Mac user, we'd love to make sure that it works better. We do everything we can. Like anything Apple wants to do with Windows, rather... It's iTunes, iMessage, whatever. We welcome that. Yeah, I don't think Apple's going to be and doing... Apple's like, we've heard of Windows. <laughs> yeah, we, I don't think we're doing a Windows messages for Windows, which is too Justine bad. And, 
Justine and Jenna had Panos Panay on their show. And really? He's just, wow. he's so Jeff Goldblum. He's just so quirky and interesting in the way he approaches any question. I could watch him for hours. Yeah. Don't expect to run Windows 11 uh, anytime <laughs> soon on anything uh, other than uh, PCs. Uh, Microsoft has said that Windows 11 will not be supported by any Intel Macintosh at all. So it has to use Secure Boot. And uh, yeah. now, the, the, I, by the way, I should, it needs TPM. It yeah, I have to say, this is a story in flux uh, because Microsoft's taking a lot of heat because of the minimum hardware requirements for Windows 11, including this trusted platform module, this Intel yeah. de, uh, security device. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this change uh, over time. But right now, it looks like without TPM 2.0, you're not going to be able to run on, uh, it, on it, Mac. It, it depends. I mean, and Microsoft, they just have not got their stuff together, depend, regardless of how big an update this is. Uh, they First, they said that here's what you're going to have to have in order to run Windows 11. Then they said, well, if you don't have it, then you can run it in an experimental. Or you, can you can install it anyway, and if there are problems, we're not going to be responsible for it. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I think I've been reading on Reddit, uh, people who've claimed to have installed uh, Windows 11 on Macs. I think someone even said that they, uh, I saw someone claim to have installed it on an iPad even. Uh, Got to point out, though, the only version of Windows 11 people have is a leaked build that is very old. And I, right. I, I just, I think that it's premature to make any statements at this point at all. Exactly. For now, uh, Windows 11 requires TPM 2.0. Apple does not support that on, on its Intel Macs. It's possible Apple could do a firmware update to their uh, Intel Macs that made it work. I don't see why they would since they're phasing yeah. them out. Um on the other hand, Microsoft's moving along very quickly with Windows on ARM. In fact, they've just announced uh, support uh, for uh, Windows on ARM for uh, Microsoft Office, which probably, you know, they've been supporting M1 with Microsoft Office already. So I think that probably the future is moving more towards M1 and away from Intel no matter what. Yeah. Uh, not just in the, in the Apple world. Uh, let's see what else. What else is going on? Have you tried any of the uh, new betas? The beta two is out for Monterey, Renee. Have you tried yes, that? All of them. Anything? All of them. And there's new betas for uh, iOS 15 as well. These are not the public ones though yet, right? No. Those, those although those are often based on the second or third uh, developer beta, ah, whichever one proves to be more stable. So it could be. I, I, last year it took until July to get the public beta, but last year WWDC was a couple weeks later. So this is usually around the time, you know, this week, next week, uh, when we could start seeing them. New Hello wallpapers and screensavers uh, available to all. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Um, actually, actually, uh, going back to Windows 11, they did one thing I absolutely support. They uh, they have the amazing, an amazing collection of wallpapers for Windows 11, and I did download the entire collection. And they I've were got, beautiful. I've got, yeah, I've, I've got one on my iPad, and it's like, oh my god, that's beautiful. They really are pretty. They're, well, you know what? They're very much inspired by Apple. Yeah, I think <laughs> but, wavy, wavy stacks of colorful paper. Yes, exactly. Very pretty. Let's, let's say let's say they they ripped off the same. Independent artists that Apple probably ripped off That's, or hired. Yeah, probably the case. Yeah. Um, I don't. What is the status of boot camp on uh, M1 Max? It, it also is, doesn't exist, right? There's no boot down. No, there's no. There's no there is no boot camp. You know what do you want to run Windows on that for? Run Linux. Well, so, you know, like like the people who are way smarter than us, and by that I mean the people who are in high school and college were running Windows 11 in parallels last night on Twitter. You know, so they just right. they, it doesn't matter. Nothing stops them. I should correct myself. Uh, that Microsoft has released uh, Windows 11 on the developer channel for insiders uh, as of yesterday. So I don't know if that's what they were using. Uh, I don't think the developer's build is very different from the leaked build as far as I know, but I haven't tried it yet. Thank you, Dwindle, in our chat room for reminding you know, me Christina that. Warren will figure it out. It'll only take a few days. <laughs> Somebody. Um, foundation. We have a date. September 24th. That's not very far. Foundation will premiere on uh, Apple TV Plus. There are at this point Apple TV Plus. We talked last week about all the second seasons and so forth, yeah. but this is the, the the very important turning point because at this point it's not free anymore. So it'll be very interesting to see if they can come up with stuff to keep people uh, subscribed. Twenty five daytime Emmy Award nominations, recognizing Long Way Up, Ghostwriter, Helpsters, Stillwater. 
Helpsters help you. I don't know any of these. Here we are, notes for living on planet Earth. Uh, I never heard of any of these. Helpsters is the Sesame Street for code. These are kids. They announced. Okay, kids yeah. shows. Daytime programming. Uh, outstanding travel adventure nature program, long way up. Outstanding short form children's program for helpsters. Help you. Nice. Not nine uh, nominations for Ghostwriter. So, a good job, Apple. I guess when it comes to awards, we'll see. When it comes to subscriptions, the, the, the award that really counts. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There are two, there are two kinds of currency. Uh, there are three kinds of currency. There's money, there's PR, and then there's prestige. Right. Apple can definitely give them two of those. They can hope to give them the third. Good news in the, the uh, iOS 15 beta you, developers, apps can now ask for more memory. Remember that was uh, something yeah. that the, the CEO of Procreate said, oh, man, I can only get 5 gigs of RAM even on a 16-gig iPad Pro. Well, an increased memory limit is now available with the OS proc available memory function. And so this is part of uh, Apple's new beta. Uh, that's good news. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting conundrum because very, very, according to developers themselves, like when I was on Alex's um, panel, we had people from... Um, Luma Fusion on saying like we don't really need that much memory on iOS. It, it, I think people forget that they're fundamentally differently engineered right. than a classic computer. Right. There's no I, I, there's no paging to memory. There's no swap. So if you have like two side by side apps and they're beefy apps, and then you have like a wind like a video window on top of that, you have the new notes thing on top of that. You have like sliding over. All of those need to be in main memory, and that's why the iPad is so fast. So like you might have eight gigabytes or twelve gigabytes, but two or three apps, and you're starting to use that, and it's starting to jet some your older apps right out of memory, which you might not like mm. because then you have to reload them or reload all your tabs all the time. So it's a very different balancing act. But I think this is a really good compromise. And I know some people won't be happy until an iPhone or an iPad does swap like a Mac. And there's reasons they didn't do that historically just for memory and for overwrites and for like a bunch of other reasons. And maybe they need to explore that. But I think this is a good middle ground where an app can ask for that entitlement. And if that app really is going to do things like extra layers or like Alex is going to photogrammetry his, you know, his buns off for... Yeah for a few hours and you're really focused on that and you're not jumping around between apps, it'll just give you all the memory that the system can can possibly give you. And then when you leave, you're signaling that you want to multitask again and it's going to just reduce the memory requirement. Uh, and that, that's a good best of both worlds scenario, I think, for now at least. Yeah, absolutely. You, you hate to you hate to for something again, especially something that's ex as expensive as an iPad Pro, that can do the thing that you need it to do. But but if not if not for this limitation that was artificially imposed upon it, just like you'd you'd like to be able to say override, please give me more memory, please. I I don't want I don't want to run other apps. I don't care if I'm keeping these other uh, browser tabs open. I just need you to do this one thing for me right now, right here. Give me as much bandwidth as possible so I can stream from this camera. Uh, over to the internet. So, yeah, that's I, I, I like every single time you see one of these evidences that Apple appreciates that they are charging as much for the top of the line iPads as for almost a top of the line uh, Windows uh, Windows uh, machine these days. And so it really has to earn, earn its coins there. It's also interesting to me because it's such an Apple solution and they do this all the time and sometimes it blows up in their faces and sometimes it's really smart. Like back in the old days with iOS 4, they're like, we want multitasking. No, you want to surf Safari while you're listening to yeah. Pandora. Okay, here's your API and here's like, <laughs> we want swap. And they're like, no, you just want to be able to have as many yeah. layers as you want in, in, in Procreate. Here's your API. <laughs> it's always been the problem. Uh, it's a problem on the radio show. You got to ask the right question. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, you know, when you go to a, a, a repair shop, you shouldn't tell the guy what's wrong with your car. You should tell him what the symptoms are. Let him figure out what's, yeah, what's wrong. Right. Go to the doctor. Don't tell the solution Don't you say, want. Tell him the problem yeah. you have. I have a hyperactive but, yeah. thyroid doctor. No, no, just tell him the symptoms. He can figure that one out. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, but, but on the other hand, when I, when I, when I complain that, wow, why does this, why does this huge tablet not have a headphone jack? The correct well, answer that I'm, I'm looking for, the, the answer, the answer I'm looking for is not, but we decided to give you the best Bluetooth connectivity. <laughs> Activity possible, saying again. I know it. I know what Bluetooth is. Thank you. I would like to be able to just simply plug yeah. in a headphone jack. It so drives some, me crazy. Sometimes, it drives so, me crazy. Sometimes, yeah. and, and that that does apply to other things as well. There, I, I mean, I, I in the same in the same show, I praised Apple for, uh, for saying, well, gee, I, I want a better webcam, and they said, well, we gave you a better webcam. We didn't we didn't decide to give you more resolution. We decided to give you AI based. We'll follow you around the room. Uh, but sometimes 
don't try to inter- don't try to interpret. I get hey wow things are connected to other things. Like it's like Apple Apple got a dose of this with their with their uh, with their their compute centers. It's like no, we didn't ask you do this the cheapest way possible. I know you think that that's doing your job well and you're being really clever by saving us some money and some complexity, but we're telling you what we as a company want and need from your products and or services, and we are wondering why you are arguing with us that we don't actually want the things that we actually want um i think we got everything in here do we want to do rumors mark german says apro is exploring future ipad designs with larger screens that is about the softest yes, rumor you can have yeah 2023 yeah like, yeah exploring big deal uh I, iphone 13 pro will feature ultra wide lens with autofocus coming to regular models next year again it's a rumor uh, I, I guess we're getting closer to the iPhone 10, or rather the iPhone 13 release. So yeah. maybe those rumors will start. Be I love what Apple's doing. According to John Prosser, Apple is making some employees wear body cameras, police-grade <laughs> body cameras, to uh, to keep from uh, releasing uh, any uh, information. Look at that. That's, that's one <laughs> yeah. of the things that doesn't get a lot of attention is that, like, uh, uh, I, like uh, I understand, like, di different people leak for different reasons. Sometimes a manager makes a decision you're unhappy with and you run. You can usually tell because that manager is named in, in the in the leak at that point. <laughs> or, or you know, people are super excited and they can't help but tell somebody. Like, but it makes life for their team so much worse. Every time there's a big leak, it just becomes harder and harder to do your job. And I get that you're excited or you're or you're peeved, but, and I like reading leaks, you know, as much as anybody else. To me, it's like movie leaks. It's all the same stuff. It's not, it's not serious whistleblowing. Like there's a, a dump of toxic chemicals somewhere. This is just <laughs> like leaks about products. It's like story leaks. It, yeah. it just, it makes their lives so much harder every time. And body cams are just like a step beyond for me. I'd be, it, it's I'd unclear be like, to me, my job? is it the employees in Cupertino or is it the employees in the factories? Unclear to me. Here's the here's a page Prosser claims is from a manual given to Apple employees. Getting to know your Axon Body 2 camera. Um, and by the way, he says Apple employees were warned not to leak that they were going <laughs> to harm its employees yeah. with body cameras. Uh, and that and got not leaked. all. And the report says <laughs> not all of them. Just people who are. I'm I'm, I'm sure that if you if you if you take a ride in an Apple car, you're probably going to be weird. Yeah. Uh, that and, makes and sense. Stuff like that. Or in and, the design, yeah. if you go into the design labs, yeah, I guess yeah. that makes sense. And, and, it, and it just comes down to the thing is, you promised not to. You, you, you signed something. You promised people that you are not going to talk about the stuff that you should, that you see uh, when you're working at Apple. And so for that reason, you shouldn't do it. The the thing that got that kind of got up my nose though was uh, kind of what this story shook shook loose was uh, Apple uh, actually taking. Uh, sending having their lawyers send warning letters to uh uh, people outside the United States who are passing along leaked information, threatening them, saying the information you pass on about unannounced Apple products can give our our competitors an, unf uh, an, an unfair advantage and can damage our business. And we want to warn you. And they're just scaring people off. They're not do not just uh, people who are writing blog posts, but also uh, the usual workaround when you get like pictures of uh, of uh, the upcoming Apple headphones. Obviously, you're not going to run the picture because you'll blow your source. So as a result, you hand it off to someone who's really good at product rendering and they will create a render that sort of sanitizes the image uh, so you can't notice where it came from. So they're actually, they're even sending letters to p those people, again, if they're outside the United States. And why yeah. only to the people outside the United States? Because they know that they will never get away with that. It, it, basically, you, if, if someone in the United States got that letter, you would make a nice video about it, make a nice blog yeah, post that's about the it, problem. <laughs> frame it, put it on the wall and point at it and laugh. And it really, it, it kind of offends me that Apple would even try something like this because all, what they're actually saying is that uh, on some level, this is what, this, this is what journalists are supposed to be able to do. That if they feel if they got access to a, a piece of information legally, meaning they didn't pay some, they didn't pay an employee to give them the information, they didn't coerce them to give the information. If they just simply said, "Hey, my DMs are open," and someone decided to put a PDF file in the, inside uh, their in, in a link to a DM, 
with all kinds of information about the next Apple Watch, they are 100% free to to post that information and do whatever they kind of do whatever they want with it. And for Apple to to assume that to presume that no, we can we own all the information. The press has absolutely no right to say anything about anything that we're doing that we don't actually approve them to release. It really does bespeak of an attitude inside of Apple that the press on some level are just an arm of Apple's marketing department. They are not allowed to do anything that Apple does does not like or is inconvenient to them. And that uh, that really kind of got up my nose. You're referring to a, um, a letter received by a uh, Chinese leaker Kang from a Apple yeah, law firm saying creator. don't, you know, don't release that and uh, he actually there is a chilling effect. And you know, remember we have a first amendment in the United States. I doubt there's a first amendment in China. Yeah. Again, that's why we're, we're, there's there's free press outside of the United States, of course. There are protected speech outside of the United States, of course. The only real difference is that we also have in the Constitution that you can't make a law that limits free speech or the free press. Right. That's the difference between us and most. But other a company countries. can sue sue you. I mean, that's completely legal. Yes, yeah, they can. They can. Yeah. They can intimidate you, but they they even they, even there. You're not going to get any traction whatsoever. This yeah. is I could you could you can dial a one eight hundred lawyer <laughs> and give them a case of beer and they can get this thrown out in the United States yeah. of America. Uh, the thing that's Kang has like a ninety seven point one accuracy yeah. uh, rating on Apple Track, yeah. uh, but it's he, all last minute. Like he would do it the night before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, on Weibo, he, but he he yeah. leaked a lot of yeah. stuff this, that he's leaked yeah. is quite accurate. Yeah. So. The thing that's also I, 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 fascinating I, I, to me is that. Mike, Mark Gurman leaked a memo about people getting fired for leaks that were based that were leaked to Mark Gurman, and now John Prosser <laughs> has leaked uh, this chest camera that is being imposed because of people who leak stuff to him. It's like this layer of meta that I just right. I'm not ready for in the leaker community. So just to make this clear, I'm not a fan of rumors and leaks, mostly because a lot of them are wrong, and and it seems yeah. like it's it's really all about seeing who can be the first to say something, whether it's true or not. But on the other hand, I think it is an important uh, role for the press to play if it helps people make buying decisions. I, I understand. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin Apple's surprise. Nobody does wants to do that. But if if you're about to buy a laptop and we think Apple's going to release a laptop in two weeks, that information is useful to you. And so that's what uh, yeah. I think a free press does. That's important. Yes, yeah. and, and There's to, like layers and to, me, to that to me, too, because like you. Sorry, Andy, go ahead. I was just going to say, to me, it's just not even as complicated as that. It's that, look, you don't get to control what other people say about you. If they got that information legitimately, this is not, this is a solved problem. This is a known thing. This isn't someone doing, using technology in a way that uh, that has never existed before. Well, but that's the if question. You, you they got it legitimately? Say, Did they get it legitimately if it's leaked from an Apple employee? Is that legitimate? Like if, Apple, if, Apple can, if Apple can prove that that uh, Prosser or anybody else was saying, "Hey, I'll, I'll give you a free mug if you give if you give me a, a render of the new headphones or any or anything of of that of that way," sh sure, they can go someplace with it. But again, all if all I'm doing is saying, "Here is my, my DMs are open," or "Here is my go go to tips.com or whatever." Yeah. Your your hands are absolutely clean, and if you don't, I mean, this is the you, you could you could have even received. Excuse me, you, you, if if you had if you had the iPhone four that was famously left behind at the bar, if you were if Gizmodo had been smart and talked to their lawyers before talking to the responding to that email, they could have worked out a way that said that we will never take receipt of this property that doesn't belong to you. However, we will uh, we will pay you for access to this device in. Inside this hotel suite, uh, after you sign a bunch of documents, you, we will. It's still yours. You're taking it. It's uh, we're not taking possession of it. Then again, you're just doing fact gathering. You're taking advantage of their mistake. I don't. I just don't like the the impression that Apple says that the only people who are allowed to give us to to give information before something's released are the people that have signed NDAs or the people that we have just chosen to be an unnamed source for because it behooves also, us at this point uh, to have this information out there without us having to actually lay claim to it. It's also so wily. We're not your puppets. Now we're going to get is we're also going to now we're just going to get a bunch of of body cam footage leaked. You know, it's just going to be the perfect source of all the next <laughs> oh yeah that's generation a good idea. of leaks. That's a great um, idea. But the thing that so like I agree with like a lot of this, but it 
Apple is an incredibly logical company. They don't do a lot of really weird things. And any of us who've been covering Apple for a while can probably tell you with a fair amount of accuracy, there's going to be another iPhone. There's going to be another MacBook. This is probably the usual increase. Like just based on pattern analysis over the last 10 years, we can give you fairly accurate predictions about what Apple is going to do next across a wide swath of products. We don't really need leaks for that kind of stuff. So to me, this really is just like TV show or movie spoilers. Some people hate them. Right. Don't look at them. Some people want to know instantly every bit of news. And there are people who really get off on giving people the news first because it gives them fame and attention. And inside companies, because they know it was them. Outside companies, because they get all the hits or the or the views. And that's just a culture that's always going to want to be fed. So I, I, I totally agree with Andy about all the journalistic stuff. Like, you have an absolute right to do all of that. But the, the culture is endlessly fascinating to me. But I don't think it's critical for us to do our jobs in terms of informing consumers about buying decisions. We could not get a single leak again, and we could all do that job really, really well, I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's the, the, it, but that's the, the, point, the only point that I'm making is that that is an individual journalist. And, it, and I, I will use a wide, explain, a wide definition of journalist, even if you're just someone yes. who uh, is, is, is just uh, posting on Weibo or whatever uh, versus someone who's working for the Wall Street Journal. That's our, that's our choice to make. That's not Apple's choice to make. I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm very, very – I have it has, it's been a while since I've been offered a really, really – juicy tidbit about like an upcoming like uh, a key apple product i mean i mean years but even back then even like 10 years ago it's just not interesting to me it's like okay so great so now you have what you claim to be a render uh eight and uh, not 10 months in advance of someone that something that could easily change at any time that doesn't affect uh, anyone's life doesn't even really affect the product i mean it's not if it's working conditions inside factories great. No, definitely. That's a, that's something that's actually important. But this is just, in, in a way, I think that stoking the fires with these rumors is kind of doing Apple's Apple PR, uh, Apple's, Apple's marketing division, their job for, for them because we're getting people to think, oh, let's, let's get people excited about the iPhone 13 by speculating that it's going to be a perfectly round phone. And you'll be able to, you'll be able to, t whenever, uh, whenever the battery gets low, it smells like an English muffin with, with the cinnamon <laughs> on top of it and get people really excited about it. No, I don't, care. I don't know. That's not a bad idea, though. I like it. <laughs> right, be right before the battery ignites. Ooh, is someone baking mm. an apple pie? <laughs> warning, warning. Uh, let's take a little break. Your picks of the week coming up next. Andy and Renee, our show today brought to you quite literally by Cashfly. Cashfly is our content delivery network, our CDN. They've been innovating content delivery since 1999. We've been using them since... Before 2010, we early on in the uh, days of the podcasts, we really had trouble getting the podcast to you, downloading them from a website. Uh, we actually tried BitTorrent for a while, and then uh, uh, Matt Levine from uh, Cashly called us and said, "We can help. Let's let's solve this." And ever since, we've been so happy. Never had a problem. Uh, thanks to Cashfly, getting our podcast out to you in a timely fashion. That's for a lot of reasons. Cashfly is all over the world. Fifty points of presence in every continent. Well, maybe not Antarctica, but everywhere else. So it means you're getting it, uh, our content from a server close to you. That global delivery is one of the things I love Cashfly about. They're 100% reliable SLA. I love too. They never go down. And now Cashfly offers ultra low latency streaming. Stream delays less than one second. This ain't WebRTC, baby. This is awesome. They've got their own HTML5 player you can use with an SDK. means you can put it anywhere. Uh, it's completely scalable. Their ultra-low latency video platform can deliver video to more than a million users concurrently and ingest thousands of synchronous streams, ingesting RTMP, RTMPS, SRT, and more to deliver an ultra-low latency SLDP or HLS streams. In fact, they can do that simultaneously. It's designed for transmuxing thousands of streams at the same time with live failover. You'll get a solution tailored to you, too, that's one of the things I love about Cashfly. They're great support and service. They'll, they'll design something that works exactly for your needs, all based on their reliable, robust global network with the ingest and delivery anywhere in the world you need it. 24-7, 365 day priority support. They're always there when you need them. Gosh, that's hard to believe. A million concurrent streams. And by the way, because of their reliable throughput and scalability, Cashfly is about five times faster than other CDNs, the world's most reliable CDN. They're helping folks with uh, donations to World Central Kitchen right now, serving 300,000 warm meals so far. 
They pioneered the first AnyCast CDN infrastructure back in 2002. Their best hop technology automatically finds the fastest route to and from customer origin across that global network of POPs for the maximum in performance and reliability. I, I go on and on. I'm a big fan. I think you will be, too. And if you are using another CDN or if you're not using a CDN at all for your app or your podcast or your streaming content, you want to check out CashFly. We can get you a really low-pressure but very informative analysis of your current CDN bill or usage trends. See if you're overpaying 20% for your CDN. Learn more at twit.cashfly.com. I can't recommend them more highly. They are the best. We love them twit.cashfly.com. Thank you, Cashfly, for all you've done to make us uh, success and uh, continued success to you, Matt and, and team. Cashfly. Twit.cashfly.com. I have to mention this. I, You know, I, it's kind of silly, but somebody has made, it's a iPod.js, a JavaScript uh, <laughs> iPod that you can, you can log into your Apple Music or your Spotify you have to click the buttons and click the spin the track wheel and everything just just like just like you would on a uh, on a regular so it's a little funky to use but if you want a music player that reminds you of how good see I'm trying to click see I'm trying to click the you can't you have to scroll down you have to <laughs> use the use the scroll that's, wheel that's in that's integrity that's integrity <laughs> and then you can't just click the buttons you have to select the button and then click the button in the middle yeah though this is the actual this button. is yeah. actually the way it, it works it's pretty cool uh i just wanted to wanted to mention this is uh they call it uh, ipod.js but it's at tannerv.com t-a-n-n-e-r-v.com slash ipod free to use if you want a kind of nice yeah, player for your Macintosh or your uh, iPad, iPod.js. That is integrity, right? You want it, but the problem is you want to touch or click those things. You can't. You have to scroll. The way. I bet. Well, I bet. I bet the touchpad on your uh, on your on your MacBook would work. Maybe it would. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, it would. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. iPad. Yeah. I don't have any music on here, unfortunately. Or I, I would play I some for you. I have to admit that I've uh, I kind of missed that real really tactile interface. Uh, of a, of a music player and having the actual device in your hand, yeah, and no, and know that, it's, that it's, wheel, it's, it was always great. It's designed yeah. to be nothing but a music player. I've, I still yeah. I still use my uh, my Sony Digital Walkman, the A fifty five that I got last year, uh, and it really is a different. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's because I am like again Gen X. I didn't like grow up with uh, with the with the iPhone, but there's something about no. This is the device that has like all like 800, 900 of my albums albums in it. When I shuffle play, it is shuffling through every track I have. ever ever bought ever uh, and if i want to go yes. to the next track i don't wake i don't wake it <laughs> like do, do touch id and then tap like a next button there is a clicky button with a little with a little bump on the side so i can find it by touch i touch it and suddenly i'm listening to dolly parton's jolene instead of whatever i was you listening to before. Jolene, that's why jolene. i think that's why they went back to all the switches and knobs in star trek because with ambient computing they just needed something tactile so they said yeah. they're going to put clickers on everything else right the computer is vocal but everything else is going to be a big clicker all right, now I now I have to try this. I'm going to sign in my Apple Music here. <laughs> Roger Whitaker, Leo, give us some Roger Whitaker. There's, there's a ship plays safe and ready on the harbor. Oh, look at this! Oh, you are. Look at this! There it is. There's my cover flow. Remember cover flow? Wasn't that cool? Yep. Yeah. Oh man! Oh, see, I have to scroll through it. Look at that. Uh, I don't know if you've I. Got, it's like music. you got the KTEL Instant mm -hmm. Record Collection. I sure do. Let's play that funky music. Was, Here we go. Let's see how Steve it sounds. Steve was so good at making everything sound amazing. Look at that. It's playing. Look at that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's even in stereo, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just want, I just want to audio? buy this person a coffee or something. Is that just clever? Give, I, want, I want to give this person $3.78 or whatever, because just for this, having all of it, we all have these really cool, weird ideas. Not all of us say, you know what? I'm actually going to do it. Look, I'm playing brick on an iPod, on JavaScript, on my Linux box. <laughs> now that. Somehow even this is also screwing Steve Wozniak for $500. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hey, hi-oh. All right. Andy, your pick of the week. 
uh, one of my favorite things ever. Uh, the Prop Store is a online is an auction site and a store, a store that just does auctions of really great high end like memorabilia, collectibles, that sort of stuff. We're not talking about cards and comic books. We're talking about original movie props going from like original Star Wars lightsabers all the way to like costumes from uh, from Casablanca and uh, they have a really massive auction right now uh, that is filled with uh, name any sort of science fiction or fantasy property of the past 20 30 years they've got stuff from it they even got stuff from Forrest Gump it's such a really Ooh, great uh, variety of stuff and the reason why I'm calling this out is not because like anyone can probably afford like $250,000 $300,000 for an Indiana Jones hat from the first movie but uh, you can download the PDF and keep it and just reading through here's just a photo auction photos of all of these amazing props look at this is the abyss helmet this. and it really looks like it's been worn I mean this thing's beaten the hell because it has that's I I I, I, I singled out a few of the a few of the items from here. Uh, I the, the, I had to single out the dive helmet because that is the one p per piece of movie memorabilia that if I could afford to buy it, I would love to have because that was a I, I love the abyss. I think it's I think it's my favorite uh, James Cameron movie, one of my favorite movies. Period. And because they were shooting this diving movie like practically, not only did that have to be a cool looking had to like, work. movie helmet, it had right, it had to keep these people alive at 50, wow. 50 to sixty feet below uh, below the water level for like 10 to 12 hours at a time so it was all functional all practical and it look at it's that beautiful harmonization between let's make this a real like uh, construction dive helmet doesn't have that much glass you can't see that much of the people's faces it may not even have that kind of lights on it or microphones in it but they had to make it work for uh, for for filming but it actually worked so they ha they have the helmet that's like supposed to the auction estimate is about 3000 they have like the the air supply backpack they have one of the missiles from it uh they but there's a lot of different stuff uh, uh i think the raiders of the lost ark stuff i already uh, they start the auction started today i think the hat went for like a quarter million or oh, three hundred thousand dollars. yeah yeah but they, also, but they also have like weird like one-off stuff like you know the scene in being john malkovich where Mal malkovich walks into like a, a restaurant and everybody is john malkovich so they have one of the john malkovich ma masks they put on the extras available for auction and amaz <laughs> imagine the crimes you could come up with by saying who was it? It was John Malkovich, but maybe from 1992, not from not from today. Here's so, a so I, here's a bloodied costume from the 310 to Yuma, Russell Crowe's costume. Look at this. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm I'm not even halfway through it. It's a two day auction. So, this, so, so not only not only for this auction, but also uh, there are a lot of uh, auction sites, Sotheby's too, uh, the profiles in history. Where every time there's a new auction, I will download the PDF and put it on my iPad because this is just like the it's it's like a free co free 800 page coffee table book in which all the all these props that you got to see for maybe eight seconds in the background. You can take all the time you want, and there'll be a description that explains exactly how it works and uh, what is working right now. Sometimes it's horrifying because it's like uh, it's like a, a, an adorable creature from uh, from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but it was made out the the mask is and stuff are made out of latex and foam rubber, so it's now this sort of like dried leaf that kind of <laughs> looks like Leonardo. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it was buried in a shallow grave and just discovered <laughs> like <laughs> thirteen years later. These are going for pretty good prices too. Who gets the money for this? Uh, if people who are putting up these auction lots. Uh, the t uh, Adam Savage on the Tested.com channel has been featuring a lot of these things, and oftentimes it is like a, uh, someone who worked on the special effects who still has like one of the maquettes that they uh, that they took home after after the job or here's something that nobody wanted uh and sometimes these things have been floating through collectors hands time and time again and now the wheel has the wheel has stopped and now it's going to be spinning again look at this austin powers blue velvet sh suit and green shirt i think uh, i think dane should buy this he used to be austin powers every halloween yeah. <laughs> he could really up his up his yeah. game here baby it really, baby it really is it really is great i will, I will not, i'm this sure that fun. i will never be able to afford one of those helmets but with all of the it's you get pictures of like the entire of the helmet from all angles well lit so if i ever like the, the one really complicated cosplay that i would ever like want to invest the time in actually making if i ever did would be like one of these dive suits from the somebody Abyss. spent so, twenty so thousand dollars on this alarm clock from the dashboard in back to the future Yep. Twenty thousand dollars, but oh. you—you'd have to be a serious fan. 
You'd have to be a serious collector. But yeah. again, the PDF is free. They also do things like the, the the prop newspaper from when like Biff and his gang in the future got arrested. <laughs> that, so 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 now you can actually zoom in that and read awesome. all of the headlines yeah. and all the articles. And yeah. I'm always so impressed because like you'll they, they have the newspaper article from The Godfather when uh, Don Corleone got shot. He, that was the headline. And no, they had someone write actual stories. It wasn't just dummy text. Someone had to write a news story about the gangland shooting in the background and who's suspected. So like I so this is a, it, this it is costs hysterical. And it's, yeah, and it's great value for money. Wow. Uh, shimps sunk by whales since 1979. Uh, wow. President says she's tired. <laughs> Queen Diana will visit Washington. Kelp price increase. Slam ball playoffs begin. This is great. Gang later says, I was framed. Hoverboard rampage destroys courthouse. <laughs> how how quaint that they th again the future the future is that oh the, there'll be there'll still be a printed paper version of USA Today but it will be talking about hoverboard damage. Yeah, that's the, that's the future. <laughs> that's the future. This was of course Back to the Future Part Two. So right. yeah, very nice picks. I love this. Uh, PropStoreAuction.com and it's on right now, but uh, yeah. I'm sure they have other stuff as well again yeah. there, there are auctions all the time and, and again go go to other other auction sites uh like uh, like again profiles in history uh, i i actually do go to i actually do download like catalogs from uh, from art sites because that's where i get less dumb about art because it's not just the names you've heard of but wow that's really pretty who's that i've never heard of them but now i'm now i'm a fan michael keaton's again, free, bat free content. suit wouldn't you like michael keaton's bat suit <laughs> Yep. Where does he get those wonderful toys? <laughs> if you're not a fan of peripheral vision, it's a wonderful outfit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it looks a little worn, frankly. Uh, maybe maybe Michael brought it to some Hollywood parties. I don't know. Also, you, yeah, you got to figure that he definitely sweated into those rubber pants. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. You definitely want to lice all that. Yeah, there's some. Well, on. there's some DNA on there for your. Yeah. Oh, oh, they also, they also have they, they oh, um, we we should move on, but uh, they also have two original Muppets. They have a, a Statler and Waldorf puppet. So oh, at least or at least the heads. Oh, I need that. <laughs> oh, I need that right now. Uh, by the way, I found out as I was playing with my new iPod that there is there are themes. Oh, ah, they got the YouTube the version. The YouTube version. Yep. Look at that, huh? I should play some YouTube. <laughs> On here, let's hello, scroll hello. all the way down. Remember this? Oh, Lord. Thing called vertigo. it's not getting past B. Oh, remember when everyone got a free U2 album and they were really upset about it? Yeah, they didn't care for it at all. <laughs> I remember that. Look at that. This is uh, this is uh, this is awesome. Seriously, <laughs> awesome. All right, Mr. Renee Ritchie, your pick of the week. So mine is, is really fun. There's a, a really talented YouTuber. Uh, it has a channel called Nothing But Tech. Her name is Jacqueline Dallas. And she created her first product uh, today. She announced it. And it was just, it was just nice to see you know, people being creative and industrious. And it's these cards. Uh, and and uh, it's not, a, not NFT cards. God, and NFT BT. My and thinking. BT. No, and BT is her channel. And these are, I'm blank on technology. It's not Bluetooth. It's the thing you tap. Um, NF, no, uh, I'm blank on the name, Leo. The radios NFC. that you just have NFC. to pay with. NFC. Yeah, there's too many acronyms, too many initialisms. <laughs> well, they're NBT cards for NFC, so I understand NFC, your confusion. Yeah. These are tap-to-pay so, cards. They're yeah, pretty. Well, they're not tap-to-pay. They're, they're tap-to-inform. So, like, you can program them with things like if you're at a conference and you want to give someone your web address or your Instagram or your Twitter, oh, that's neat. you can just tap it to their phone and their browser will pop up and it'll be filled oh, with the page. Oh, that's great. So these are basically account or NFC uh, tags. They used to be... Yes. All the rage, but now you can carry it just in your pocket. Just nicely designed cards, and then and uh, she's doing a bunch of designs that are meaningful to her channel, but also just really nice designs in general. Uh, you know, she had me at cold brew, basically. I like that cold brew. <laughs> so the actually, you know, nowadays probably you could carry this in your pocket instead of business cards, and just people tap yep. their phone to it, and it would uh, send over your VCF uh, virtual. Yeah card or your your web, a lot of people have uh, web pages that have all their links yeah on now as well and oh, it would just that's really cool. that for them and you don't need to spell things you don't need to type them out you won't need to you know no no my name has two c's and a k in it you know it's <laughs> any of that kind of stuff so it's just it's and oh, it's clever it's a really nice you can even uh, do it you can even uh, share 32 megabyte files up to 32 megabyte files on it so it's yeah. got some storage so it works, works yeah. with Hydrant. U.S. only for now. She is working on expanding it. U.S. only for now, though. And she's going to do different designs every month. So you can, you can find it. Very cool. What is her channel about? 
uh, it's technology reviews. She does really good, uh, especially Android photography based uh, reviews, like the different camera systems on Android phones. But she does like a, a wide range of Apple and Android uh, gear reviews. Nice. Very thoughtful. And she has a really good video about Facebook. I think we talked about a, a month or so ago with a lot of really good animations and stuff in it to explain how everything really works when it comes to data sharing. NBT is her channel, and this is at tap.dive.fyi. I guess dive is the technology. Yeah. These are dive cards, so that's cool. Very nice. I didn't even know about this. Yeah. I think I'm going to get yeah. one to I'm, carry I'm in my pocket one. for my business yeah. card. I, I was in, for sure. I was in just that. I was in exactly that situation last week because, the, as <laughs> as as you know, there was the filming happening in my neighborhood, and I'm hanging around taking pictures. And someone's, oh, did you did you get pictures of so and so? And oh yeah, oh my god, I'm such a fan. My heart is palpitating. Can you send me a picture? One of the pictures that you took of so and so? And I said, well, uh, sure. Like okay, okay. okay. And, and I had a moo card, with, moo card with me, which is one of those little little strip. Cards I love the moo cards. Like my, yeah, you know, those are but so I could, cool. But I could have just I could have just like taken out one of these these uh, dive cards and just like hold out your phone beep okay here's a link Love to that idea. Now, now you have now you have a web page that shows you how to get to my instagram or whatever that is great i'm I'm, abs I'm absolutely buying one i'm buying and i'll buy one from her store absolutely yeah hers are a little more expensive to benefit her but not much a couple bucks more but that's she's, great she's worth it she's worth it that's yeah. awesome. And I just love smart creators thinking of really cool useful products. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah 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 Nothing but tech, baby. Thank, thank God you told me that was cold brew because I again I'm a New Englander. I really thought that was like fried whole clams on the on the left there. <laughs> Chowda, whole, Chowda. Fried, fried whole belly clams. Oh yeah, yeah. Leo, Leo, Leo will see it. I thought it could be coffee milk, but okay, that's good. That's good. I, I don't I don't drink coffee, so. <laughs> uh, if you you know if you're near Rhode Island, you got to drink coffee milk. Ask Rich to tell you about coffee milk. I think he's an Eclipse guy. I'm not Any sure. Any of the riches ask, in your area. Ask your doctor. <laughs> ask your doctor about coffee milk. He'll tell you, don't drink it. It'll kill you. But it's sure good. Just freebase it. You it's, just, you just got to balance it out with enough Dell's lemonade so to get to, to oh, sort of. Oh, I love Dell's lemonade. It's out your belt. Yeah. <sighs> These I got, are I got the, the, the foods the of my th childhood. There's a there's a Dell's lemonade cart. I'm talking. I'm telling you, like 20 yards away from my front door. Oh, and as man. soon as like this show is over, because I've had the I've had the fans off. I'm sweating like a you know what. Same. And yeah. there's a there's a there's a lovely young person that will I'll for three dollars will give me a slushy cup of fresh lemonade and I'll give them a tip for of a dollar and I will be much much refreshed very very soon. The battle, of course, between uh, the dueling coffee milk brands is Autocrat versus Eclipse. But I'm glad to see you can now get Autocrat on subscribe and save on Amazon. So I may be, uh, <laughs> I may be, oh, this has got to be so bad for you. Uh, <laughs> Leo, why are you so excited today? No reason, no reason. No, no reason. reason. It's not the coffee, just it's the, the sugar. You know, these things make, have make, high. Just, just make sure. Make number sure one ingredient, sure high fructose corn syrup. Number two ingredient, corn syrup. <laughs> have you ever watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Leo? Uh, no, and I know that's the end a, of it, right? The is cold the, brew? The cold brew thing, yeah, yeah, no. Yes. You've told me yes. before, I gotta like watch this. Yeah. Gotta watch that's this. That's exactly what's gonna happen to you on this stuff. You gotta be careful. It is only 100 calories per two tablespoon serving, so I don't, you probably use more than two tablespoons per glass, however. It's important. It's important that you dilute it with coffee. Don't just don't drink, drink it, it straight don't, out don't of the just, bottle. Just, just a cannonball. Drink it directly. <laughs> oh wow! Look at this. They definitely know their audience. Frequently bought together: <laughs> Autocrat coffee syrup, Dell's lemonade natural gift bundle, and Iggy's clam cake mix. <laughs> this is the Rhode Island bundle right there. Everything you need to have from Providence. Sometimes That's hysterical. Dead is better. I might, I might actually buy this. Just, <laughs> it's uh, Autocrat is the official state drunk coffee milk of Rhode Island, <laughs> according to Autocrat. I, I like that phrasing. <laughs> official state <laughs> drunk coffee milk. <laughs> I don't even know if that's correct or just uh, somebody's uh, misinterpretation. What, what kind of what kind of sash and tiara do you get if you're the official state drunk? <laughs> I'm the official state. The coffee mill of the official state drunk. Is that what it is? Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> I don't know. You, you need a semicolon. You need punctuation there just to make it really. Does it have enough coffee to to get a small wake up jolt? Ask somebody. Two tablespoons has a mere fourteen milligrams. Uh, I don't know. Eclipse has a little more, so maybe uh, maybe go with the Eclipse if you really need the. Uh, I think the ingredient list cracks me up. It's mostly corn syrup with a little bit of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Andy and Akko, when are you going to be on GBH next? 
Uh, I'm on Friday at 1 p.m. Go to WGBHnews.org. You can stream it live or a few hours later. Uh, by the way, review, How to Grow Old with a Smile. I'm a 97-year-old New England native living in Florida. I have made coffee milkshakes all my life, three scoops of coffee ice cream, two large spoonfuls of coffee syrup, fill container with milk, stir with blender, then relax. <laughs> no, you see, if, if she, if she, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call I, her I'm out. I'm guessing if she, if, Witten if, is not alive anymore. That was uh, written four years ago. If she, if she were a real New Englander, instead of like ice cream, she'd say no. I, and, and I'll also like un, uh, uncup a hoodsie at the top. That's the ice cream. Oh yeah, hoodsies. Got to have the hoodsies. You must be Rhode Islander. You got, you know all. Oh, no, the I'm, I'm, no, I'm a New Englander. For New England. It's, it's like I, could, I grew up like three. Uh, HP three Hood. Years. Yep. Yep. <sighs> Peggy Makes Lawton cookies and brownies. There you oh, go. Man, they they were baked like back. one town over. My, 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 I, could, I can eat like a, a Peggy Lawton brownie and suddenly I'm in third grade all over again. It is wonderful. Yeah. Life was simpler then. People seem to smile more. You know Sorry. what? Just put this in your coffee. Then it'll have enough caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> coffee flavored coffee. <laughs> Renee Ritchie. YouTube.com slash Renee Ritchie. Anything to plug? Of course you do. I'm work. I'm just working on all the beta stuff right now, Leo. Just so much, so much. Beta you, so you're gonna do videos on the betas because they just all came and watched everything. It got a beta, right? Yeah. Well, I, I, some people cover them every time there's a beta. I'm gonna wait and well, when when the public betas come out, I'll I'll put my videos yeah. out just so that people. How have soon do you think? Resources. We didn't ask, but how soon do you think that it should be any day now? Yes. Yeah. Any of the ne this week, next week, I think is typical timing for them. Is usually once once we get to this phase. And I am going to watch as well to talk to you yeah. next Tuesday for MacBreak Weekly, but I really want to put iPad OS on my uh, iPad Pro. Yeah, They've if been it's good reliable. For me. iPad OS has been Springboard crashing a touch more. Uh, I've had a single Springboard crash on iOS, but iPad OS I've had a couple, but uh, nothing major. They're working well. Yeah. I just can't wait till enough people I know have them so we can do like the share play <laughs> stuff, like right. the FaceTime <laughs> screen sharing. So stuff. much cool stuff. Yeah, I just and then can't I have wait the, I have this other it. problem. That you know that you and Andy can identify is that is I have people in my contacts I can't show and iOS is now so show everyone in your contacts heavy that it's really hard to get screenshots <laughs> for a lot of these demos now so I have to figure that out. Uh, okay, folks, we've come to the conclusion of MacBreak Weekly. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. Um, we do this show on Tuesdays around about 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. I tell you that so you can watch us do it live. We have a live video stream kind of behind the scenes as we do shows at twit.tv slash live. Actually, there's video and audio, so if, if you can't watch, you can listen. Uh, if you're watching or listening live, chat live at irc.twit.tv. Uh, On-demand versions of the show available at twit.tv slash mbw. There's also a YouTube channel. Uh, for all the videos, and uh, all the shows have their own YouTube channels. And, uh, of course, the best way to do this would be subscribe in your favorite uh, podcast player. If the podcast player does have reviews like Apple's does, uh, please leave us a five-star review. Tell the world about your love for Mac Break <laughs> Weekly. There's another way to show your love. If, if you're not yet a member of Club Twit, we'd love to have you in the club. Club Twit is... A way of supporting uh, the network, $7 a month, but you get some benefits. Add free versions of everything we do, add audio and video. You get your own dedicated feed at Club Twit. You'll also get uh, the Club Twit Plus feed, which is all the good stuff that doesn't make it into the podcasts, pre-show, in-between show stuff. There's all sorts of interesting chatter. My favorite benefit, though, is our Club Twit Discord. Man, is it great. Uh, some wonderful people in there. Um, and you can join and join us in there. Renee's uh, right now in there. Many of our hosts uh, join us in the Club Twit Discord. There's conversations behind every show. Of course, MacBreak Weekly has a channel. There they are. The sheep are applauding. Uh, but we also have channels for every other show. And there's even channels for uh, other geeky topics like Linux, coding, data science, food, gaming, hacking, hardware, travel, space. So like-minded people because it's uh it's admission by uh, by fee you know seven dollars a month uh it's the best place ever you know it's it's only the people who are serious twit fans so the conversations are are wonderful in there uh again if you want to know more about club twit the main reason to do it is to support the network uh twit.tv slash club twit twit.tv slash club twit thank you uh 
Renee. Thank you, Andy. Alex will be back next week. Thank you all for joining us. Now it's time to get back to work because, as Alex says, break time is over. We'll see you. Hope you enjoyed that episode. If you would like to laugh while learning about how to take control and take advantage of all of the features that your iOS devices provide, then you should check out iOS Today. The show Rosemary Orchard, my co-host, and I, Micah Sargent, host every week on the Twit Network. It's all things Apple all the time. <laughs>